Ascension begins Find yourself within Take up your blade Let the fears within fade Stories are told As the day roll Don't be afraid Make your sin Monster nor foe can fill you with woe. Enemies in sight, it's time to roll down. Roll for initiative. Check, please. Hello, checkers and pleasers alike. I have a very small announcement at the beginning of this before we do our introductions. I just wanted to let you all know that for those who are new or old viewers of the Czech Republic streams, you now have access to uh, re-rolls for characters for free spice points that you get just from watching the stream. So what you can do is in the bottom corner, normally there's a little treasure chest, you can click on that and spend those points to give us a re-roll. Now, it is not a reroll of your choice. We bank it, and if we want, we can use it. But you can only give one per person per stream. And after that stream is over, they do not carry over into the next game. So, as Beardy would put it, use it or lose it, players. Now, onto the introductions. Beardy, if you may. Hello, everybody. I'm Beardy, your, your DM for the evening. And these are my lovely players. Hello, I'm Kenny. I play Louie. He does magic. It's ice and magical and full butterflies. Hi, I'm Screwy. I, I play a uh, sinewy pile of clothes. You're just going to keep going at it. All right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Grim. So you're, you're Screwy and not Louie, but then we got Louie before Screwy. I'm Grim. <laughs> no rhyme here. <laughs> No, yeah. Um, and I play a Valentino. I almost forgot who I play. It's you know Ben. <laughs> it's one of those days, one of those weeks. He 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 plays me sometimes. I think he's the real. He's in charge. I feel that. I feel that. Mm -hmm. Everyone, mm -hmm. I'm Shane, and I play Xander, uh, the Golden Boy. And mm. I'm Zeno. I play the Good Doctor, uh, Zulin. Wonderful. Put some quotes around that. You yeah. play good doctor and Zulin? Uh, good doctor. <laughs> doctor. Yeah, but there's not like good. A those aren't like two different characters. Zulin. You're okay. <laughs> okay. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back. Hi. So, just as a, a quick little recap from last time, uh, the party started their adventure last week. The travelers rest along the road between Kanyas and Luciana. And there they found a group of goblinoids had taken over the inn and slain most of the people inside. After a botched rescue attempt, uh, the remaining captives inside were killed and then the goblins decided to take things to fisticuffs and, well, it went about as you'd expect. So the goblins are slain. The area is safe with everyone dead and the group has managed to take the lone survivor with them along the road. I can't so, believe diplomacy failed. I can't can't believe that your incredibly incredibly diplomatic Approach. gesture didn't didn't work. Yeah. So diplomatic. So diplomatic. The most diplomatic even. One right screen could mm -hmm. say yep. if it yep. were true. <laughs> Very well put. Very well put. <laughs> Interesting yep. if true. <laughs> and after that, the group traveled further down until they reached the next day, the town of Bicares, which is a lovely little hole-in-the-wall nothing town that is famous for very little, except for, according to Bro, a type of cake that they make. We ate but, it. <laughs> you did. But could also be famous for dancing cows. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> true. You did find a rather interesting thing in town, which was that it appears that some monster, some beast is coming from the nearby forest known as the Beckwood 
and coming in and stealing animals. And so far they have stolen a pig, cow, and a horse. Townsfolk are worried that it will be a child next. A child. So, the, child. the next on the list of animals. Yeah, the next. I mean, you're going to work your way up. Yeah, get child is after horse. Yeah. In monetary value. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Maybe are they just like stuffing one inside of the another, like a turducken. Oh, so it'd no. be just like trying to cook something. Pig cow horse. Mm hmm. Or, oh no, see, it's the other way around. Uh, so it'd be a, uh, horse cow, ig. Yeah. There you go. Hork-ig. Biggest the smallest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A horkig. Horkig. Hork-ig. Is that that would you? All right, we'll go with that. That's New fine. Asian race, please. <laughs> well, you all managed. Like a dish. You all decided to take the job. Try and find what was causing this and how to solve the issue and bring things back to a sense of normalcy in the town of Kares. And so you decided to investigate and went to the farm where all these animals have been uh, absconded from. After talking to the mother and kids that live there, you decided that the best course forward is just to venture on into the Beckwood yourselves and find out the truth behind this mystery. After finding some odd things hanging in the trees, wards and strange twisted fetishes made of sticks, twine, or human hair even, wrapping them up. Uh, you all decided, hey, that, that's fine. That, that doesn't bother anybody. And Xander specifically just, I believe, plucked one out of a tree and just snapped its head off. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say uh, he was going to snap the head off because I thought that they were human-sized. If it's just small, <laughs> he's just going to take the entire thing. Okay. Tight yeah. his waist. Yeah, they're, they're, they're about, you know, a foot, foot tall maybe. But they, they have these little, the they're all made of twigs, just <laughs> woven together with human hair. Amazing. <laughs> I hate it so much. <laughs> what's the problem? It's so yeah. mm, bad what's, juju. What's bad juju. Yeah. No, oh, no, no, yeah, no, no. That's, 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 that's mm. cost. They're not magic, right? Yeah. <laughs> We just That's... couldn't tell if they were magical. I don't believe no, we, that we shit. We have detect magic as a spell. We've been we don't fooled have to detect in the past. <laughs> yeah. What, you believe in curses? Xander's over here like, I can't possibly be cursed. And Louis's like, I can. Fuck you. <laughs> <clears throat> well, your group mm-hmm. had headed further into the forest. And on the way in... You passed those fetishes. One of them was plucked by Xander. You made your way deeper into this place until you came across a stone archway. It looked truly ancient. And beyond it appears to be an area of... I guess the way I would put it would be an area where a stream flows through here and expands out to become a small pond. Inside that pond, taking up almost the entire space of the pond itself, is an island. So really, the stream kind of is just forming a ring around a small island. And over this area, it appears to be sort of a wetland. There's various kinds of larger trees in here, but mostly it's these big willow trees that kind of seep down over top of everything. And as you're looking at this space ahead of you, in this clearing of the forest, you see... A few odd figures standing about. And bring you into a little scene here. (laughs) Ahead of you appears to be this island. And upon it stands three animals that are going about their, their business. The pig is rooting through some rocks. There's a horse that's just sort of staring blankly into nothingness. And then there's a cow that is rooting around looking for anything interesting in the the tall grasses. Mixed around them and walking around the room or around the island appears to be a man. Uh, He appears to be human male of average height, 
with a thick beard and a mustache of dark brown. His green eyes watch you all carefully. He reminds you almost of a wild animal. He's sizing you up. His clothes are a, a simple tunic with a belt and bandolier of small pouches. Over this, he wears a red cloak with a hood obscuring most of his head. His tanned skin is slightly covered in the dust and dirt of the wild, but he appears surprisingly clean. Though, if this is, in fact, a, a man of the forest, he is perhaps cleaner than you would have expected of someone like that, of a, of a wild man. Um, and he definitely notices us. Mm hmm Hello? Um, excuse me, sir. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be here. Oh, um, probably not, but we are. And I was wondering if you could answer some questions for us, if you, if you wouldn't mind, please. Make it quick. This isn't a place for you and yours. I don't exactly know what that means. Um, it's, it's sacred land. This is a, a place of, of power and significance to the world. And I, well, it's my job to defend it, and I don't want well, um, anyone from the outside coming in here and mucking it up. So the, the people from the town are really scared because the animals have gone missing, and oh. they're worried that kids are gonna go missing um and i just wanted to confirm with you that everything's okay and you're not gonna like hurt anybody hurt him he, he, seems he shrugs confused at your words i'm not here to hurt anyone i'm trying to follow the will of my god and well and what god I'm is following that? the signs do you know why these animals have been disappearing See your friends here match the descriptions. He turns and looks at the animals around him and then looks back at your group. Well, they're... They don't belong to anyone anymore. Excuse me, I'm just trying to take notes. What is your intention with the pig uh, starting off? <laughs> just everyone looks at Zulin for a moment. Just, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this horrified look on <laughs> face. What's I, your I intention with the pig? Yeah, I that's have, that's a better question. I don't have any intentions. And and his name is not the pig. What's his name? His own name. Well, how are you supposed to know that? Well, exactly. You could ask. Well, we haven't gotten exactly, to that yet. We're this getting is there. the problem with with your kind. You well, you, you assume he hasn't spoken so much us yet. We we're we're not. The pig will turn and look at the man in red and then look at the party and goes, eh, it's okay. They seem all right. <laughs> Louis just <laughs> touches the, the stone archway he's next to. Hello. Hey, what is your name, sir? Ah, uh, Charles, but you can call me Charlie. Hi, Charlie. I think I like you, Charlie. <laughs> and Louis looks to the other animals. Would you mind introducing yourselves as well? The cow looks up from a bunch of flowers that it was smelling and says, Oh, uh, lovely to meet you, dear. Uh, my name's Gladys. Hi, hi hello. G Gladys. That's very polite of you. Uh, th th thank you very much, miss. I've never talked to anyone. And you? <laughs> Lu Louis gestures to the horse. The horse is sort of just staring into the middle distance, and it turns finally to look at you, and it blinks and just stares at you <laughs> for a imagine, long time. Just imagine the druid oh. saying, 
he's a horse. He can't fucking talk. <laughs> Why would you think <laughs> that's just my horse? What the hell's wrong with you? No, the uh, the horse stares at you and then will open his mouth and goes, My name is Samuel. Hello, Samuel. It's it's, it's nice to meet you. And you? And Louie gestures to the man in the robe. I'm not exactly interested in making friends with any of you, and I would really prefer if you would just leave me to my work. Uh, It's very important what I'm trying to do here. You seem like the only one here who is not willing to make friends, though. My friends here don't understand how dangerous outsiders can be. I've tried to help them understand, but... Is that what you mean by your kind, or do you mean something else? Yes, that's what I mean when I say your kind. I mean folk who take and burn and eat and pillage and destroy and... Yes, your kind. It outsiders. seems like you are the one making an assumption about us. Never done Isn't... such a thing in my life anyways. He just narrows his eyes at all of you. Listen. We've just come because people are really scared because of our friends going missing. And we're just trying to find a way to reassure them that they'll be safe. If you could... We're not trying to hurt you or any of our new friends. Well, they're safe. And they're staying here. All right? They they are not anyone's property, and they're not going back to be worked to death or eaten. Is that your wish? He is going to ask the animals. Oh, uh, I mean, I'd prefer to not be eaten. <laughs> I mean... If it's all the same to anyone else, I would really prefer to avoid being coming somebody's dinner. I don't think that this is this druid is being exactly fair. Nature is not exactly the place where you go to not be eaten. Oh shit, that's true. Samuel. The horse stares at you. What are your thoughts? <laughs> that's a dangerous question. <laughs> <laughs> the horse blinks slowly and then opens its mouth closes its mouth opens its mouth again and then says the water looks pretty how old does this horse appear a couple years it's a it's a full grown he's just a year full grown uh, it's a it's a full grown uh, male horse. So like horse aged, yeah, ho- horse aged. I, I mean, I would say like five or six, maybe. I don't know. What do you think it looks like? What, what do you What do you think? I don't, I'm not a I'm not a horse expert. <laughs> By two years know. old, they'd be. Uh... It's an adult horse. I don't know. I, I I think five is still pretty young for a horse, in my it's, opinion. It's in, that's, it's in its that's prime. Me. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. It's a well aged workhorse. It's just he was speaking so slowly. I thought maybe he was dumb. like okay. near 15 or 20. Uh, I lean towards Louis. So I, I, I understand this, this fine. Uh, sorry. George? Ch- Ch- Charles? Charlie? Charlie. Sorry. Charlie. Hi. There. Charlie. I, I understand his stance points, but um, the other two, they, I believe they would have treated them well, right? Oh. I do have... I mean, the pig is going to be treated well during his lifetime. What was that, Xander? How how do you all feel about the children that tended to you once upon a time? Oh, the kids? They were always nice. Uh, I mean, the the boy kind of just did his job, but that little girl was real nice. She used to, to give me head scratches and pets and, and was always willing to, to sing. Uh, it was nice. She said. Xander is going to turn to the druid and say, I understand that you have some reservations about outsiders, as you will, but 
this town nearby was created as a symbol of cooperation between outsiders and druids. And as your friends have said here, not all of them are like that. Well, the portents aren't wrong, and the signs aren't wrong. Something is happening in town there, and I'm trying to follow the will of Eden, okay? <laughs> so it's not exactly <laughs> the easiest thing to interpret the will of a god that doesn't speak. So I'm trying my best. <laughs> I don't know. I'd say it makes her will pretty clear. But what kind of portents are we speaking of? <laughs> it's not a matter for outsiders. All right. Perhaps we can assist. I have the situation under control. I've just made... And he you looks around. He looks around the, pond, the, the island and looks back at all of you. A few miscalculations so far. But I'll get it right eventually. What miscalculations have you made? It's not any of your business. Go away. Go hey, back you to know town. anything about this, Charlie? You know what these ovens are? <laughs> oh, that's just Bruno being silly. <laughs> Bruno. This is the, the druid just looks a little bit embarrassed and annoyed. Hi, Bruno. Uh, I'm Louie. This is Valentino. And our friends. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest. Hello, Valentino and the rest. Just, you claim to be different and not outsiders, but I certainly don't know you, and I certainly don't have any reason to believe anything you say. So then let us prove it. What's to prove? I, I have no need of your assistance. I simply have to get it right next time. So just okay, go away. Y yeah, you... You might not need our assistance, but we, um, we're hired to look into this, and we have to, well, so... You have your answer. This is, they're fine, they're safe, there's no danger to the town. But... You can leave. What is this next time you're talking about? It's not any of your business. It may Technically, be. Technically, it is exactly our business is what we've been hired for. You're really not just going to go away, are you? You're persistent no. and very, very <laughs> annoying. Persistence is one that. of my many talents. I've already... Like a rash. I've already started notes in my notepad. It would put the page to waste if I wasn't able to get any more filled out. We just don't have any conclusive evidence to prove that you're actually doing something good just like you don't trust us it's really hard to trust you Gladys will walk a little closer oh dear he's not doing anything bad he's just doing his best to try and follow Eden's will can you let us know what that is some of us are a little more god blind it's not a matter for those outside the faith, but if you're not going to just leave and I have to explain every little thing to you, I will. All right? Oh, and Louis takes out his notebook. Yes, please. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> Eden sent a message that a blessed being lives in that town. All right? Portents were very clear. The acorns were silver. All right? He reaches into his cloak and he pulls out uh, what looks like a little silver nugget. And he holds it up. He's too far away for you to see it properly. But he puts it back away. That only happens when... Well, when she makes her divine will known and chooses someone to give uh, her blessings to. And in this case, I... Well, I, I thought it was Charles here at first. Yeah, yeah, you certainly did, Bruno. Those but hey, really we all make mistakes. It's okay, buddy. The important thing is that you keep trying. Why do you think it's an animal? But, because when Eden blesses something, it is almost always an animal. Why not a tree or a person? Could Technically, be. a person is an animal, as That's Valentina true. was saying. Mm -hmm. Zulin has a point on that end. We're all animals. What about an insect? Look, 
Mm. So I I thought it was Charles here, but it, it wasn't. Um, so I waited for more signs, and then I went back and thought it was perhaps it was Gladys, and it wasn't. And then I went back thinking that it could be Samuel, and he just looks at Samuel and then looks back at the party. It's Louis not just Samuel. making a, are you kidding me face? <laughs> It's, it's not Samuel. But the important thing is I will narrow it down and I'll find I will find the one that was touched by Eden and I'll bring them into the fold. What is the tell of one that's been touched by your god? That's a lot of little things. Uh, it, it's difficult to put into words. They have a, an aura about them, an energy of... Um, a knack, Are you certain ability? that it's, it was someone born in a town and not a sign of someone passing through? No, no. It's it, it's someone it's that checking. lives there. It's All right. Well, none of you. Um, you're certain. Weird outsiders. <laughs> Louis raises his hand. Excuse me. What? What if we just took you around town and you tried to find the person's aura and... We explain who you are so it's completely safe and you don't have to be this kind of spooky mystery person in a hood that's pretty creepy, actually. I never went to the town in this form. I always shifted into something... Extreme? Well, something different, yes. It was for both my protection and theirs. They need to keep out of this forest and... Louis if writes they down, me, then... I was right. <laughs> and if they decided to try to attack me, I needed to defend myself. So, yes. Okay, but if you're with us, you won't be attacked. We can help you. I, I don't trust any of you. And I don't see why I should. I mean, if this helps get your God mission over with, I'm sure it would be easy as can be if we just did this and then it's faster for you and faster for me I would like to point out also that it would be dependent on the will of this person you speak as if just because Eden has given her blessing this person must come into the fold almost as if they have no choice in the matter of course they have no choice in the matter the will of Eden goes beyond any other desire in the world <laughs> bullshit You're talking about the the being that gave life. Congratulations to her. Do you think that Eden is not capable of leading this chosen to you on her own? That's precisely what the portents are for. Do you not understand that this is the process? God, there you're pig-headed. This is the process. I'm on the, on the impression that the entirety of nature is the process. Is the way this person or animal, whoever grows thinks what they do in their life, not because of Edom, not part of importance. You're insane. And I'm trying to get a job done. So I'm going to keep trying to get my job done, and you Stop can all stealing leave. people's pets! They're not... They, they all, the animals all turn to you and kind <laughs> of, like, look a little offended at the word pet. Friends, except for the, what do you want? Except for the horse. Oh, yeah. Except for the horse. <laughs> oh, Samuel. <laughs> oh, that poor family thing. is what he meant. Yeah, yeah, sure, He's sure. Separating families. Do you not think so? Do you not think that little girl doesn't think of you as family? Charlie? I mean, and that is until the day they decide to put a knife in me and then have me oh. for dinner. There are plenty of animals out here that are going to try and do the same thing. Yeah. And you all can leave now. You've made your points. Go away. I have no interest in you. And if you stick around, I'll just go to hit you with a lightning bolt. How about that? I'll stand under the arch. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> Louis narrows his eyes. Someone talk him down. I'm not good at this right now. Uh, is, is there anything in particular you'd like me to say to him? Hmm. I um, shouldn't say what I want to say to him. So no, maybe I'm not the best person to ask right now. What could we do to earn your trust? 
I mean, un unless you suddenly were members of the Edenite Church or... Points at Valentino. Pretty sure he is. Decided to... No, that man <laughs> is crazy and <laughs> is talking in circles. They definitely don't seem like they're uh, countermanding of each other, but I don't know if I would agree with you on God, that. God, I hate Edenite so much. <laughs> so... Uh, yes, and unless you're suddenly druids from one of the groves coming here to talk to me, then I don't think you have anything interesting for my ears. So you can go on back to town. He's going to force me... someone. He's going to force someone to be a druid. I have a question. Of course you have if a you question. Find this all, person. That's all you have are questions. You have nothing for me. Yes, well, perhaps if you provided some more useful information, I wouldn't have to ask questions. Oh, shit. Do go on. <laughs> what happens if you go into town and this person happens to be, let's say, a child? And they don't want to be separated from their family. What would you do then? If the being that was blessed by Eden happened to be a human? Yeah. That would be very disappointing. <laughs> Louis shaking Can at I this point. Him? No, that you kind of you cut you sidestepped the the point. So, if there are a it, human regardless child. of regardless of what the being is, if they are touched by the hand of Eden, then they belong in the grove. They belong in the church. That is their so destiny. Would, that is their life. Would, would, but you would you kidnap them, the child? It's not. So you're going to say some random hypothetical and try to, to say that I'm a kidnapper because I'm trying to follow the will of my God. Say yes so or no. You're I mean, trying to you're... solve a problem. Regardless of what the being is, it would belong here. It's not complicated. Is this like a like a self projection thing, like a like a self loathing thing going on? Like I, I noticed right. how you said it's disappointing if it were a human. At that point, he's going to hold up a hand, and a bolt of lightning is going to blast into the ground about stone? five oh. feet okay. next to Valentino. Louis looked like he was ready to cast a spell in retaliation, <laughs> blowing a little crater in the ground. And he's like, "I've had about enough out of all of you. Oh, you can leave like at any time. Let me hit him." And Louis is looking at Valentino. I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you look at Louis, besides the shaking, you can kind of see there's this sense of rage in his eyes. You haven't, you haven't really known him for a long time, but this is very new, an expression for this boy to you. Ooh. Let me do it. Just let me do it. <laughs> Let, let's cool off. Let's have that cool off for a bit. Think it over. If you still want to blast his head off, okay. look, I think we can take him. I just don't want to disappoint the pig. <laughs> Charlie is cool. He's pretty cool. <laughs> He's pretty cool. I, I, okay. I, I'm, I'm partial to Gladys, but I don't think there's much going on behind so that. that it's one it's not Samuel. It's it's not Samuel. <laughs> I, I will <laughs> pausing. I'll be honest, I'm already quite disappointed. It appears that we're not even going to see an actual chimera. That is disappointing. <laughs> I was looking forward to that as well. Oh, what if we had gotten pieces? <laughs> he, he's <laughs> mumbling to Zulin as well, just excited about things. <laughs> yes, so, but the... now just be humans. It's, it's no m magical uh, Yeah, please don't anatomy. cut apart humans. That. I, w I would appreciate that. I mean, it's called an operation. No, no, no. Oh, or an autopsy. Ah. So our group <laughs> starts heading away then? All yeah. Right. yeah. You're, you're going to be heading out of here? Back okay. Just okay. briefly. And he's mm -hmm. going to turn and say, it's fascinating how you respect the autonomy and choice of these animals, but you won't respect the autonomy of the one that is supposedly blessed by Eden. Perhaps the reason why this is so difficult for you is because you're just not a very good follower. And then he's gonna turn and walk away. Oh, oh. Yeah! Fuck! <laughs> Does he respond? Does he respond? Ooh. I'm with Louis, just to be clear. 
Valentino so gonna... ain't scared of shit. Grem is like, <laughs> so what's gonna happen? I turn a... So what's oh, gonna God. happen is upon hearing that, the plants and roots and vines and all of the greenery around you are going to begin growing at a prodigious pace and start grabbing at your feet and legs, locking you to the spot. Oh, shit. Everyone? Here, everyone. Yeah, all of you. What the fuck? Gotta, do I get a save? <laughs> That's unfortunate. I mean, you can roll a save if you'd like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, what, what, what save? What save? It'd be reflex? a reflex save. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Remember to say yours out loud. I rolled blind because I forgot to change it back. Sorry. Is it 20 for me? We do it as blind or... You can um, roll it out in the open if you want. Okay. That's a nat one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 15? Uh, dirty 20. All right. So we've got ourselves some reflex saves. And uh, let's see. It looks like at that particular moment... Uh, the only people that are able to still move a little bit, and the ground is still going to be considered difficult terrain in that area, uh, would be Valentino and Xander. The two of you can still move a little bit, though it is hard to move around. The Get me out of this. The edge of his pond. Get me out of this. I have been quite patient with interlopers. I put up warnings. I told people to stay away. I have done my very best and yet you come here and think that it's all right to insult me. I have asked you to leave many times, and instead of simply respecting what the work I am doing, you have I thought it best to take it upon yourselves to act like you're greater than the will of Eden? I'd like to use my re-roll I got for the reflex save, <laughs> <You>. please. Sure. <laughs> Zuzu also has one. Uh, <laughs> no, it didn't get much better. No, <laughs> it's yeah. 15 now. <laughs> yeah, you're still you're still locked. There. <laughs> Zulin, you can choose to use a reroll here if you'd like. No, that's fine. Okay. okay. Shit, shit, shit. He just looks at you very, very annoyed. I was leaving. I was leaving. Please, please undo me. Please, don't hold me. I was simply presenting a possibility. You were the one who said that you were having difficulty with this. We were trying to provide assistance and also solve an issue that was brought up. He waves a hand, and as he does, the plants retreat back into the ground. <laughs> Get out. Louis runs. <laughs> as... As you run out of this space, Louis, yeah, uh, you can hear birds, uh, like a large swarm or flock of birds, begin to chatter and squawk. They seem to be, seemingly are getting closer and closer to your position, uh, mm -hmm. like they're coming from the deeper parts of the forest and coming toward your party um, as you're heading away from this place. Did everyone else follow? That's my question. Yeah, I'll start. Yeah, I'll start I'm not sprinting after. Give him farewell. I be with you, Bruno, monarch of the woods, sole ruler. I bid you farewell. Um, Stavik right. will go. Will turn turn and look, and look at the cow. Look 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 at the uh, at Gladys, uh, and look at them and just. Kind of waved at them. I hope the I hope the grass is very green over here for you. Oh, it is. It's delicious. Uh, there's some truffles that are really great. Uh, do you uh, have I hope a I'll message? See you later. I I do. Do you have a message in, in case we don't? Do you have a message for the for the little girl? Oh, uh, uh, tell everybody that uh, we're happy and safe. Okay. And we're living on a farm. <laughs> Upstate. Mm -hmm. Uh, well. They're not long for this world in the wilderness. <laughs> no. Maybe the horse. No. Especially not the horse. Especially well, not the yeah. Horse. Fuck. 
We're gonna find that motherfucker just floating in the water. <laughs> Come along, Xander. Uh, Xander will wave at the three animals and say, I wish you the best for the rest of your lives, and hopefully you can provide him with guidance too. And he'll walk away. All right. Okay. Your group leaves the place, and you find yourselves back in the town of Taurus. <sighs> then, not what we were thinking, but we have an answer. It, not a good one. And should we are his... As good as it's going to get. I, no. I mean, I'm, I'm respectful of Eden. I think that her bounty is important and everything, <laughs> but uh, sure, it seems to me like we tell these people the truth. But what if, what if he realizes? Oh, it could be this child, and he takes the child. I don't think they're going to let him do both that. Sides. I think that the this druid has signed his. On, he, he signed his own fate, unfortunately. I, I'm not He's so druids. sure what kind of druid he is. I'm well, confused why he's the only one there, potentially entering himself into some form of psychosis, uh, just being alone for so long. It feels like a self-fulfilling prophecy for him that he f that he finds the person that is blessed by Eden. He didn't necessarily say that he was sent by the druids. He sent it was sent. Seems more like he saw the signs. Um. Yeah, because I think he might. Eden's such a great goddess for that. I've spoken my piece about it. Eden's signs come through everything. There's not much interpretation needed. Yeah, if she and wishes she's... for you to eat, she will give you an apple. She can't help anything, though. Beardy. Yes. Would I be able to figure out what a silver acorn means? Yeah, knowledge religion. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Mm. That Let's look it up on is... that. Uh... A twelve. Mm. Secrets. <laughs> mm hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, so, well, Xander, uh, I'm afraid your, your knowledge of specific portents within Edenism is maybe not your strong suit. I'll try. Sure. Now one, fuck that shit. I don't care. I don't care about Eden. <laughs> fuck Eden. <laughs> now Eden one, let's shit. go. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Well, regardless, it seems like our course of action is laid out. What would that be? If you don't have a kind of at an impasse, I have yeah, a I suggestion. Saw the lightning bolt. I feel like there's multiple solutions. Yeah, that we have kill the enterprise. druid. There's currently four solutions, <laughs> at least. <laughs> Let's hear them. Sure, oh. man. Sort of to run to them. Go on, Zulin. Well, one would be we could potentially kill every animal in the village. No, which that's is not an option. Druid. That's not an option. I don't think that would help, too. because if it is a person, then we'd have to kill all of them, too, and that wouldn't really... That yeah, would kind of I, I, don't, the whole I, I don't think that's kosher at all. But but this druid is not expecting a human of, or humanoid. Yeah, any he's sense. probably going to steal everyone's animals until he realizes it's actually a person, because he's so pig-headed. Sorry, I keep using this term, and now we know a peg, and I don't actually know what else to call him. Uh, Schweinhund? Shitbag? Shitbag it is. Second, Scheiße. Secondly, we could just inform everyone that there is a dangerous thief in the forest that has been stealing the livestock. Yeah, but like, 
what if they decide to just like get upset and like form up a group and go in there and try to fight the druid and the druid like kills them with like freaky plant magic honestly i think getting rid of the druid is the best solution in that instance can we get rid of the druid i mean of course but uh i but before we try that i mean i figure these druids have been relegated there's only we only found the one they've been pushed away from the town for a reason i think if it comes to blows he's not going to win that numbers are going to win out that said we would rather not that happen I mean, it seemed like he had, like, a whole bunch of birds chase us out of the forest, too. So, like, I don't know if it's just the druid. I'm pretty sure yeah. the birds were just following because they wanted a better look. And the, I wasn't yeah. running from any birds. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, right. Oh. I, I'm pretty sure he threw a lightning bolt, too. So, like... That part's not scary. I, I think that was just a coincidence. Yeah, it's just a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> hmm. I just think he's more of a detriment to society. I mean, probably, yeah. I mean, like, if he keeps messing with the town, that might, like, you know, mess up the town. Cost socioeconomic stop... collapse. Well, they're gonna stop making whip cakes if they. If they... It would. It, it oh, could draw a, a, a wedge, a wedge between the Edenites and the townspeople. All right, we can't I let mean, these, these who fucking wants down. to deal with an Eden Knight anyways, so... Yeah, you got that right. I mean, they're not all bad, right? No, all, all of them are bad. Chill. I don't know about that. <laughs> and and Louis, Louis kind of looking at Bastion, giving him an approving nod. I mean, I'm just saying, like, most of them are kind of like crazy weird forest hippies. people like that. Yeah, but they know yeah. what will fuck you up, man. They, they know the good shit. Uh, yeah, like I guess, but like you just gotta I find one never, of the chill I've ones. I've never partied with one, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. you gotta party with them either. Night. Do you suppose, <laughs> Valentino friend, that you could party with this one? No. <laughs> <laughs> this guy took every stick in his woods and shoved them all up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's... <laughs> yeah, that's pretty accurate. That's, that's pretty accurate, yeah. So, would you say he's like a quiver? What? You know, you're just making the joke worse right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, it was fine where it said, was. Hey, this is a funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it now. You took it. You took it away from him. It's fine. You stole it. You stole his joke. Please. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna put a hand on Stavik's shoulder. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sure you'll it's look. Right. You'll get a funny one, Stavik. It'll be all right. Yeah, just don't take other people's. You got this. So what, so what are we gonna do about the druid? Kill him. Oh, well, how are we gonna do that? Go how? up to him and blast him. Is it? I'll freeze um, him to the ground until okay. we can I, chop off his ankles. Actually, I, 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 had, I, an, I, I had an idea. Thing. If you got the coincidentally to struck by lightning again before that happened, like when he was you're in his line of sight. So we have we have this one druid. Is there anybody else in the town that is connected to Eden that could maybe Please say? Please don't make me work with another Eden knight. I, I who is the temple I know, in town? But... Who is that too? Oh, the temple here. It was a yeah. temple to Eden, but it's oh. it's defunct. Um, All right, let's, my dude. let's touch Let some grass, grow guys. <laughs> touch some grass. Oh, Eden. Mm. Okay, yeah, you guys can you can head to the Eden Night Temple if you'd like. Uh, it is, yeah. however, it's it's closed and it has been for like a generation. You think so, we could like, just the, go in? Wow. Well, as you see the building, like the 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 windows are either broken or missing across the building. The there is a door that is sort of boarded up on the front of the building. And that's about the only entrance. Let's just go in through the windows. Mm. Are the windows also boarded up? You said they were broken. Are they boarded up? Many of them up? are broken or, or missing. So you, you can try to climb in there. I mean, it might look a little weird to the townsfolk, but yeah. Why don't we just ask the mayor for permission and then go in? You ask for permission. Mm. I'm going in. <laughs> um... Okay. Always ask for forgiveness. <laughs> they already know that we're investigating, so that shouldn't be a problem. 
I, I mean, just, we don't just have don't, to ask. They won't know I'm in there. I, I don't want to get arrested in this country. <laughs> have you been arrested elsewhere? Yeah. Wait. What? Are you? You? Are you on the uh, the the world tour as well? What, what do you mean? You already got this one. Um, How many times have you been? Arrested? Personally, personally, I I love me a Muscovian prison myself. They don't lock them up too much, but they have a lot of guards. So this you, you've been to Muscova? Sort of. I thought it was a dog. Huh. I want to know more about that later. Um, no. Re remember when I was sort of telling uh, you all about a law of, of not. Oh, like sleeping outside. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Camping. Not around here, huh? That was in Sizun. Oh. Oh. I just don't want to get arrested in this country too okay oh, tell you what if you get arrested i'll break you out have, have we seen illegal. any guards here the town the guards here this is a very yeah. small town exactly a gab yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's, a, it's a very small town you haven't seen much of like local law enforcement of any kind yeah, otherwise they would have sent someone to get the goddamn animals um, yeah yeah I'm going to go to the mayor's house. I'll ask permission. I'll be right back. I just... Before you go. Yeah? I'm going to, like, pat back of Louis' leg to, like, gesture for you to, like, kneel down. He flinches at your touch. And oh, after he calms right. down, he, he'll he kneel down. What? Are you, are you all right? I'm fine. Why? Fake. I just want to make sure. What do you mean? You seemed really freaked out back there. When? When we were speaking with Bruno. Well, he's an Edenite. He is an asshole. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, that's a synonym. Well, if you uh, if you're if you're doing all right, then that's all good. Go to like pat him on the shoulder and then like realize that he, he's already second, wincing myself. away as soon as and your I'm hand like, goes out. You got it. All right. Well, oh, could you by chance ask if the mayor knows our friend Bruno? Yeah, I can ask him about Bruno. Sure. Um, I. I don't want to be al alone. Can someone? I'll come with you. Thank you. I'll I'll go with you. That's fine. I don't think we need. Okay. Okay, fine. I won't go with you. No, Jeez. no, it's it's. You can go. You can come with me. We're breaking into a place. I'm not. I'm not gonna break into a place. Okay. Well, okay. It's metaphor. I'm not breaking anything. They're That's not highly me. illegal. I mean, we just climb into a window. I'm. Yeah. I'm can't be that illegal. Louis it's just starts right walking there. away. <laughs> I'm gonna just find the mayor. Someone's got to know where the mayor lives. I'm to do an acrobatics check to flip through an open window. <laughs> yeah, the, so the party splits up there. And oh, good. <clears throat> can I get an acrobatics then from Valentino? I'm going to roll one as well for Bastion as the two of them decide to do flips into the building. We had 29. Hell Ooh, yeah. Look at you. Fuck. Godly. Nicely done. <laughs> Bastion watches that and says, that's really good. And he takes a step back and he tries to do the same thing. He misjudges the distance Aww. and he ends up doing a front flip, but his rotation is wrong and he kind of cracks his head on the building and flops onto the ground. Oh! After having rolled a nat one. <laughs> Baby Someone boy. Can, can maybe He's just laying move. there for a minute. He's like, I'm, o I'm okay. I'm just going to lay here though. <laughs> That's about a mood. It. That's a fucking mood. <laughs> And while he's laying there, we're going to zoom over to Louis. Oh, okay. Louis, and, and who, who went with you? Xander. Xander. All right, Louis and Xander, the two of you make your way over to the elder's house. You knock upon the door, and a moment later, the door is going to open, and standing before you is an aged woman. She appears to be somewhere in her probably late 60s, but she has a sharp eye. And she looks at you and says, Oh, it's you folks again. Fine. What is it now? Did you find out what it was? Hello, miss. Um, oh. <laughs> miss. I haven't been miss in a long time. 
Mademoiselle? <laughs> Never mind. Did you find the beast? Did you kill it? So we need to learn a little bit more about the town. We were wondering if we could get permission to, to go into the, the, the Temple of Eden. What the with the old abandoned one? Yep. Sure. Thank you. No one goes in there. It just might be a little bit old. Yeah, that's the roof that's might be co collapsing. So just don't make too much noise in there, or or move too many things around because <laughs> if it collapses on you, it could crush somebody. Louis starts it's sweating. It's more of a hazard than anything else. Mm hmm. Um. You just you just turn. You can see. He's <laughs> 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 doing trying to worm into a window. <laughs> uh huh. Um. <laughs> Thank you so much for your permission. We are still on 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 the right. job for this. Sure. I also. All right. Good I luck. Have... You don't look all right. Questions. Oh, what is it? Uh, kind young walk. man. Thank you. I appreciate that. She seems to warm up to Xander immediately. To I mean, could you please I get it. Uh, explain the circumstances under which the temple fell into such disrepair? Oh, well, uh, when I was still very young, uh, the temple was actually still open uh, when I was a child, but that was oh, 60 years ago. And there were um, a number of these druids, I suppose. They would come out of the woods and they would lead services there in the temple and then they would go back into the woods until the next full moon, I believe, and new moon. It was twice a month. But, um, yeah, the, they, they got older, and when they died off, I suppose there was no one left to continue the services. So, eventually the town decided, and this would have been three or four elders ago, that the best thing to do would be to just simply board it up until they had need of it again or something. But I think most people at this point don't even think about it anymore. It's just sort of a, it's a bit of an eyesore. I mean, Louis someone smarts. brought up, someone brought up recently uh, using it for, for, for construction material or kindling, but <laughs> it's been there my whole life. I would feel ashamed to be the one to knock it down, but, Maybe whoever comes after me might. Of course. Thank you. Uh, does that mean that there has been no contact between druids in this town in decades? Not from anyone officially, no. We just raise animals and tend to the ground. It's a farming town. Understood. Ha have you tried the, the whip cakes? Yes, they were delicious. Oh, good. I'm rather proud of those. I think that our they might put our town on the map. I think they are. It's fine. Um, yeah, they're delicious. I love sweets like that. Hmm. Thank you so much for gracing us with your time. Yes, thank thank you very much, Mademoiselle. It sure. <clears throat> the the never mind. All right, it, it's fine uh, have a good one and uh good luck finding the beast and killing it thank you thank you and she'll close the door and leave the two of you alone louie just oh, looks no, no. up at xander that went well D did it I, I i can't tell normally and he'll just start walking back oh wait <laughs> Louis just kind of runs up after him. Um, excuse me. Yes, Louis. Well, you're. I think you're very smart. Thank you. I believe you're very intelligent as well. I could be better. I don't think intelligence is necessarily a matter of better or worse. It seems like you're attaching some sort of moral judgment to it. 
like some kind of ability score. <laughs> it's not really a moral thing. It's more like I'm not smart enough yet. Hmm. Well, I suppose it's a good thing that you're only on the beginning of your journey then. Sort of. Hmm. He gets really quiet and starts writing in his notebook. Xander <laughs> will just keep on walking. Mm -hmm. uh, ahead of you, while you're walking away from the building and back toward the, the temple there, you can see Zulin has wiggled his way through one of the partially blocked windows. Yeah, so I put the uh, alchemy station in front of it as like mm -hmm. a stepping stool, but okay. it's still... This is, this is a man who has done very little cardio in his life mm -hmm. other than what is needed. Yeah. He's I just trying to just... 35 degrees is his level of flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to... It's more like a teeter-totter where it's slipping through and then just... Whoop. You're like, Zulin, can you touch your toes? And he reaches his arms down, doesn't lean over, and he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stavik's <clears throat> just standing at the bottom of the... Uh, uh, basically just watching all this. Yeah, so at this point, Zulin, Valentino, and Bastion have all made their way into the temple. Stavik, you're still standing at the front door that's currently boarded over. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do anything, or do you just want to watch them all commit a, a small crime? I'm going to watch them commit a small crime and wait for okay. uh, Louis to come back. Okay. Well, in that case, Louis it's and a, It's Xander, entertaining, to say the least. Yeah. Louis and Xander return post-haste. Okay. Um, Can we go in? Yeah, it's legal now. We have permission. And um, she did say to be very careful because it's not really structurally sound. So try not to move things too much. Oh, so I'm going to wait out here. Take the boards off. <laughs> I'm going to hear. I'm going to wait out here. You hear a voice from the other side of the boarded up door. Wait, you guys are allowed to come in now? Uh, yeah, we'll, yes. we'll, we'll take... Yeah, let's keep this shit open. No, no, three, actually, three, stop, stop, stop. Two, Louis just starts one, walking away. On one on three. <laughs> one. Kick. And bump. <laughs> <laughs> and the door, oh. the door from the inside is going to burst open. Uh, the, the boards that were over over in front of the, the door frame itself are going to pop off their, their, their nails there. Because... <laughs> It's been nailed in place for so long that the boards are pretty rotten at this point. Mm -hmm. So mm. they sort of burst outward and scatter across the front steps of this building. Yeah, Louis on the road pretty much at this point. Hmm. It's not structurally sound. Cool. There isn't shit in there. Is there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that as a character than ask as a player. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you stand there, the... The boards have scattered out in front of the building. Bastion's sort of standing there in the doorway looking proud of himself. And you all can hear the building creak in a very unpleasant way after that. I think you should move. Well, what's wrong? It's not structurally sound. <laughs> this whole thing, this has been standing for like 100 years. This is going to stand for like 100 more. Bonk, bonk, bonk. You know it's who fine. said that last? <laughs> The killer at the tavern with the bridges that had been there for quite some time. I mean, look, the oh, trees kind of came in there and wiped them out. Like, I don't think anybody's going to hit the building with a tree anytime soon. Not Unless cool. you guys, are gonna, you're not going to hit the building with a tree while I'm in there, are you? Louis shrugs. Yeah. All right. Don't hit the building with a tree while I'll I'm checking it, it out. All right. Come on. Who's I'm going in to with me tonight? He turns around and walks back into the building. Go in. Louis' gonna wait outside. <laughs> I believe in you all. I'm testing my, my level of cavalierness, but I gotta keep up. So, uh, Stavik's just gonna Zander lean in, and look around, go, mm -hmm. no. And walk back down to stand next to Louis. Okay. Well, in no. that case, Valentino, you travel inside there following behind as Bastion heads deeper into this place. And it does appear to be a, a dilapidated old temple. It looks like there's paintings on the wall 
the, the whole building's done like the whole building is itself made of wood and on the inside walls it looks like at one time there were these beautiful paintings and mosaics sort of like right on the wall i guess you would call that a fresco or something maybe that has to maybe that has to be on stone anyway I thought that, that uh, this is not a phantom. Wait, no. Ooh. <laughs> uh, uh, wow. Fine damage, fine damage, so, fine damage. So as the, the two of you explore the space, you can see these faded old paintings on the walls that at this point have m lost most, most of their vibrancy over time as the, the pigments haven't really weathered all that well. And the pictures and paintings in here seem to paint this kind of sense of community between animals and people and the forest and the town and the druids and the townsfolk. It really seems like this place itself was like a beacon of cooperation between those two worlds. And this was a place for both of those parties to meet on sort of neutral ground and for there to be uh, an exchange of knowledge and information and trust between the two groups near as you can tell at least based on the paintings on the walls are the paintings so are they like hung up or are they painted into no the painted wall? painted on the walls damn yeah um is there any like holy books or items or anything? i realize that much that's not eden's thing but any sort of portable representation of the same stuff it doesn't appear like there's any, like, nothing that's not nailed down, I guess I would say. Like, everything in here appears to be either part of the structure or anything else has been taken a while ago. There's not even chairs left, or pews for that matter. Like, the, the rooms are pretty much empty inside. You get the sense that folks over the last 60 years have probably taken anything that they considered worthwhile to take out of this place during that period. Okay, then follow-up question. Does the lack of structural integrity on this place, does it look like these walls could be, like, if the, if I could punch out the wall, couldn't keep the painting intact? You can certainly try, but if you were to remove a wall, you're pretty sure the building would collapse. I'm pretty sure the building's going to collapse anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, for, that's, it's, it's plan B for now. Are you planning to bring this over to the guy and say, this is what you could have been? <laughs> I mean, it says what right else here. we got? <laughs> <laughs> if you just walk up to him, remember. And we have like that <laughs> memory sequence. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you just see Zulin uh, tapping on the floors. It looks like he's looking for something. Mm -hmm. It's kind of being disappointed. Zulin, make a perception check. I got it. Nice. Perception. All right. That is a 16. Okay. Okay. You look around and you're tapping on the floors as you walk, and it all kind of has the same woody thud each time. You You are a bit disappointed in the the overall lack of hidden chambers and magical <laughs> talismans and alchemical bounties to be gathered from this place. V very different from the typical temples I have gone into. Would there be a secret compartment somewhere? Do you have a reroll too? Well, I got that's a pretty good roll for me. I'll, I'll, I'll reroll. Sure. Okay. See if I get anything better. <laughs> no, there I don't. Is. There it is. The we dice it, giveth and the dice taketh <laughs> away. Wow. <laughs> Just want to say, of the last five rolls, three of them have been nat ones. And Ooh. two of them have been mine. <laughs> <laughs> Hell You're yeah. getting them out the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Mm. And this is the person who throws bombs, too. Yep. Thank yep. You, you gave thank that you guy explosives. Our, our loci of bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, I can't see anything else. And yeah, yeah, you don't notice anything else inside the building that seems all that interesting. So you find these 
old paintings basically that sort of show that the town and this building itself has a rich history of being a sense of community and cooperation between the natural world and this farm, uh, this farming town, I can say. Well, it would appear that this uh, facility is quite useless to our endeavors. Yeah, it's pretty old, isn't it? Can I give it a look? Sure. Oh, I'm in yeah. blind. There you go. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's fine. Yeah, so, yeah, just, okay. uh, same, same with uh, Zeno there. If you want to just roll perceptions uh, blind, that would be great. But it's okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. Anyway... So, Valentino, you look around as well, tapping on things and looking around. And you are going to find a spot that indeed has a different tone when you tap on it on the floor. Let me check over here. Get my, uh, well, if, does it look like there's any obvious way to, to pry the floorboard open here? Yeah, it could, could, yeah, it's one of these floorboards. So you could just like slip a knife blade in between two of the boards and try to pry it up. Do exactly that with my rapier. Okay. Yeah, you take your rapier out, slide it in between the two boards, use a little bit of leverage on it, and that board pops right out. Like almost like it wasn't even properly nailed down. Uh, anything fancy underneath? As you do, yeah, you see this little pocket of ground that has been dug out from the earth, and in that space, someone has placed a small box. It's a little wooden box. About eight inches long by four inches wide by three or four inches deep. And the, <laughs> give the place a look again, like how, how much it's coming down. And uh, I think I'll grab that box. Okay, you grab the box. All right, well, I found something. Just as I expected, most temples have something hidden away. Far less than this one, though. I guess yeah, these guys must be poor. This is all wood, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the whole building's wood. This is an alms box. I would be able to start. <laughs> <laughs> you find seventy copper coins. Yeah, like, great, cool. <laughs> Should we get out of here before this place falls on our heads? May as well. I'm gonna grab my cart as well, and someone's gonna exit the building, grab his stuff so it doesn't get damaged. If this thing does tumble down, you got it. Your cart was inside. I was like, you brought the cart inside. Why the fuck would you get <laughs> that? through the window? <laughs> you just like you climb through, and then they're just. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you managed to get yourselves out of the building. And as the three of you rejoin the rest of the party, uh, the rest of the party can see that Valentino is carrying a small wooden box. I don't know what it is, actually. Is it locked? Uh, there doesn't appear to be a lock on it, no. It's like a hinged no. top. Check it. Check the inside. All right. You hinge it open, and you look inside, and what you see is an old what might have at one time been like a talisman or an amulet, perhaps the length of cord that's attached to it has sort of weathered away and rotted to where when you pick it up, it sort of falls off of the cord that was holding it. So it's just now itself, uh, a, a basically a large coin sized talisman that looks to be made of very carefully carved wood. How has that survived? That's a good question. Well, are these things that Detect last? Detect magic? Uh, it is, in Gaggle. fact, it is magical, yes. Oh, cool. Probably through magic. But this is enchanted with. Um. Hey, could, could I do like a knowledge arcana on this at all? Or? Yeah, you, you can make a spellcraft to try to identify it if you'd like. I don't have that. I'll do that. <laughs> okay. 13? Nope. God, Not I'm even a little like bit. ass today. <laughs> can I roll it untrained? No. Okay. I don't believe so. That is a 21 for me. 21, Xander, Yikes. you take a look at it. 
and you you are able to pick piece together based on the magical aura that this item has also with your knowledge of spells and spell effects and magical items mm -hmm. you can determine that this is uh, an amulet of natural armor plus one mm. nice. so uh, it, it, it when worn by someone it would give them a plus one to their natural AC but moreover it also appears to be a holy symbol of Eden as well so it's sort of a dual purpose object you believe that this was likely belonged to a druid from a long time ago hmm. it's a double edged sword it will <laughs> give you a plus one to armor but it's also <laughs> it's also dirty mm -hmm. dirty Eden yeah. it's also an Edenite holy symbol yeah mm -hmm. this item is cursed in the <laughs> what it's got drawn on it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, even get a plus. Deal. <laughs> You'll get a plus one to your natural armor, but everyone will think you're an asshole. <laughs> I, I mean, do you think we could use this to convince that guy that one of us, definitely not me, is an Edenite? There's yes. a possibility. I mean, there is also a possibility that the portents were just pointing to this. And not to an actual person, and he was just a bad follower. <laughs> or perhaps it this will have start. some sort of significance to him to get him to realize his actions. Or none of those things, and then somebody's got some free armor, I guess. I just don't want him kidnapping a child. Oh no, we're not going to let that happen. I'll stab that guy to death before I let that happen. Louis <laughs> smiles. And then looks worried for a second. <laughs> I have crowned him monarch of the forest. If he chooses to become a fallen monarch, he's going to face the same fate. Hmm. Hmm. Has it been raining recently? No. Well, recently, no? yes, but not today. I mean, yeah. when Fortunate. when we were at the inn, it sure was fucking but, raining. That's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, it, yeah, there were there were torrential downpours at the beginning of the campaign, but it's slowed down and stopped since then. Mud. All right. Yeah. There's mud. Soggy shit. Yeah. It, it was sprinkling most of the day on the 19th, but on the 20th, it is not raining. It's still overcast, if that helps. I've oh. mostly cooled down since then. So maybe we should talk about what we want to do. Did the mayor have any uh, information about our friend? Right. I was supposed to ask about Bruno. Well,. Uh, what was Bruno's apparent age? Were we able to identify that? Could we see him under that cloak? You didn't get a great look at him, but you do believe that he was likely likely in his mid to late 20s. Yeah, so relatively young for a druid. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. What a loser. I'll go ask him about that. <laughs> Yeah. She's We're... unlikely to know about him because the last druids were seen here some decades ago. When she was a little girl. How old is she? I Older than this, don't than... think it's appropriate for me to reveal women's ages. That's all right. That's not that how I meant to ask, but that's fair. <laughs> He's a venerable <laughs> age. Right. So it seems to me like there's a better chance that that if she outlives him. There's a better chance she knows him. I'm going to go find if the name rings a bell. Where, 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 where is the mayor? Okay. So mm. you, you're given directions and you head off to the elder's house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You knock upon the door. The door opens a little bit later and you can see the, the elder standing there in the doorway looking down uh, with a, a quizzical look. Oh, Another one of you. Um, yes. Did you need more permissions to do something else? <laughs> I don't think so. However, uh, I want to reveal some information. We did go into the forest and we spoke to a man. Uh, your beast appears to be a person. A man named Bruno. Oh my. Alright. Does this ring a bell? No. 
I've Maybe. never met a be one forest of the man named Bruno Bruins. before. Perhaps a traveling merchant here or there. Uh, I think one of one of the farmer's grandfathers was perhaps named that. It, it's a somewhat common name, but, but I've never known, a, never known a wild man by that name before. Well, uh, I was hoping that that might ring a bell because he seems to have some sort of beef with this town. Dear. Uh, how did we make enemies? We're just a he's, farming community. It seems like it's pretty much on his end. He's not attacking anybody, but the animals are disappearing because he's leading them away. And uh, no. he's looking Can for Can you someone. get them back? I'm sure the Arroyo family would be very grateful to have their animals return. Oh, oh, Charlie. Do you, do you roll bluff blind real quick? <laughs> yeah, you can... You can roll a block, or we, yeah. Or, okay, well, I guess yeah. they didn't make it. They, they could not handle the dangers of the forest. They were simple farm animals, unfortunately. So I don't think we can bring them back. Okay. There might uh, be others scattered if we can look for them. Do you want to roll me that bluff? Let's do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I understand. Well, I'm sure you're all doing your best. Yes, well, we're doing very well. So... Uh, if you don't know anything more about that, then we'll keep looking. Uh, we I acted on your permissions, and we've found something in the temple. There was and something in there? I thought us. that place had been looted clean. Just a little amulet, but I want to make sure it didn't have any sort of special significance. I've never heard of an amulet in there. I mean, the old men who used to run that place when I was a child would wear these sort of amulets around their neck, but that's the only thing I could think of, is perhaps was one of theirs. I don't know why they would leave it behind. We got a weaver in town? Someone who could just make a little bit of thread? Uh, yes, there's a... There's some fabric Not that works kind of weaver. <laughs> <laughs> Weavers! Shit! <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> no! Get down! <laughs> Alright, thank yeah, you. She, been but, very helpful. Yeah, she can give you directions to someone who is skilled in fabric work. Mm. All right, All right. With that, she will bid you adieu and close the door. No, it sounds like we're back to where we were. But the news is it doesn't sound like the townsfolk are going to go form an angry mob and get themselves killed. Do you think you can bluff your way into convincing him that you're higher up in the order of Eden? Maybe it's impossible. Of course. Oh yes, okay. of course I can do that. Little you're not bit. a druid. True, but that amulet is you know. important. Are you sure I'm not a druid? I can tell you, he did not seem terribly versed in the ways of Eden. I think Xander was right about that. I mean, that... you saw the lightning bolt and the grass grab us. You've not seen the extent of my own powers, though. For you Show see, me. a true member of the Edenite court preserves their power for when it is necessary. Simple goading. Or you see Louis's simple... nose wrinkle up as you're talking about this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know if I want to fight the yeah. guy that throws lightning bolts around. I kind of do. <laughs> I, yeah, there was Valentino. A... No. Yeah. Since you are such a distinguished member of Eden's faith, I think it only appropriate for you to be handed this. And he'll take out the uh, effigy and hand it over to Valentino. <laughs> Louis just starts <laughs> stepping slightly. back. <laughs> that is bad. I, just... esteemed member that I am, I'm going to graciously allow you to keep it. As a token of <laughs> I could never. It's very presumptuous of me to even have cut it, it down. Not in front of... of course. No, mm. the, this hierarchical thing, it's really not our deal as much as, as the other druids make it out to be. Mm. It's a lot How more lateral than, than people tend to act. In that case, I shall keep it on me for safekeeping, but oh, I think it's probably it out. Yeah, you should probably throw it out. <laughs> oh, throwing it out, be, be, be burn first. it. 
we get rid of it. We could back. easily burn it. Yes. Xander is going to cast Identify on it. Just in case. Sure. Go ahead and cast Identify and then roll another Spellcraft, this time with a plus 10. Sure. Nice. Okay. Spellcraft. That okay. is a 23. Yeah. Uh, nice. You can pretty much get the same same results. This is an Amulet of Natural Armor plus one that also serves as a symbol of Eden, uh, Eden's power. So it is a, both is a holy fetish, symbol. Right? On the, yes, on it's the on the effigy. Figurine. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my apologies. Yes. This is on the effigy. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, you get no real further information. It's mm -hmm. not really a magical item. It does just look yep. like it was something that was woven out of sticks and human hair to act as kind of a, a territory marker, likely. Hmm. You said it's like a foot tall, right? It's a, yeah, they're about. I don't want that thing. It's a third of my fucking size. That's creepy. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's, that's that's that'd be terrifying. Yeah. It's it's definitely creepy looking, and but that's by design. It's very clearly it, it's very clearly meant to ward people away. I feel like I have a halfling child tied to my waist. <laughs> uh, from under his hood, were we able to see the color of Bruno's hair? Uh, yeah, Bruno had like a dark brown, blackish. Like a dark brown hair, it does is seem it, to is match. It noticeably yeah. different. Oh, it matches, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it matches the hair oh. on this, so it looks like Excellent. Bruno used his own hair to craft these. What a freak! Gross. Mm -hmm. He he gave us a voodoo doll of himself. The fool. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, useful. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need to find Xander a hag in this dude's fuck. Is going to turn to Zulin. Zulin, are you perhaps interested in collecting a sample of the druid? There's not much that I could really use with the keratin in the hair. Not needed. Understood. So, I think the past is it's all we have, I think, two options. Uh, bluff and try to get him to leave, or get him to leave by force. Also, if... He... Although it is very likely that he does not leave this small grove. If he does, we could burn it down. Hmm. I mean, that doesn't seem terribly necessary. I thought it's not do that. Cruel. This is in the same vein as letting him take the villagers, I feel. You know, it would be really convenient if it was just like a, a plant or another animal that he was looking for after all. I suppose we could check and see if any of these animals have... Uh, what did he say? An, An aura. aura. Yeah, he said it was unmistakable. And yet, I don't seem to recognize my own. <laughs> uh, with Bondery. some... Uh, oof. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, an aura. Um, Is that something that... Uh, you need to be uh, like a cleric or uh, another. You just need to be very powerful see. to notice it. Can you? Well, Can you course. see auras? Well, I see all kinds of auras to the point that they start to overlap and it kind of it's it's what an overload of information. I just it's either it's either like a blue or a pinkish or a different color. What that's he looks disgusted when you say pink. <laughs> I think it's group. actually closer to purple. Oh, you know, hey. that's a, probably about the word for it. It's just because I wear yeah, purple, like a, like, a, <laughs> like a dark, like a dark pink, right? Well, yeah, of course. So people tend to dress. It's you uh, emanating your aura, like <laughs> embodying it. Hey, Bastion. <laughs> what? Shut the fuck up. I was just saying, like purple's like a dark pink, right? It is the mix of red and blue. If we're talking paint so like Ethel. but like blue is dark so if you make pink dark it turns purple pink is so... a red tint there is no blue in that yeah but if you put blue in that then it becomes purple yeah blue is dark and if you darken pink it's purple 
Well, I think it'd be dark and pink, it's red. Nah, nah, it turns purple. It's also blue isn't necessarily dark. <sighs> sure uh, it is. It's blue. I mean, how are we talking? Cobalt blue, ultramarine blue. Are, no, like are a, we like talking cadmium blue. red? <laughs> what colors are we talking? <laughs> well, well, I think red this chromatic this. discussion is good. Yeah. I don't think it is necessary uh, progressing us to our, to the goal of extracting the druid from this town. I, I don't think, know that we need to extract unless one of you we can need them get him to stop. I think he needs to go. I agree. I don't think he's going to leave. We that, should that make we, him. If you think that that's the only option, then we have to kill him. He is not going to An leave. An eviction. That's not going to happen. <sighs> I will Cause... also say... Oh, go ahead. Um, if you, if you can read auras, <laughs> we course. can sit in the town and just people watch. I'm cool with that. <laughs> you plan to give the individual to the druid then what help would no we, we 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 identify them we tell the druid we have them you can't have them you need to leave i i think zolan has a good point we should just identify check all the auras on the animals and then if that's a, we got that quick sweep out of the way because he's, mm -hmm. we don't want to take any of the people anyway right yeah so, All right. I should say, if if it might be that it's not, you know, unlocked yet, in which case I'm, I might not be able to see it just yet because unlocked. it's not that's there. True. Yeah, that's it's how it works. Gotcha. So like, their their like their aura is not like their aura needs to be like right unlocked? because of like it, yeah. I mean, the, okay. Why okay. do you think he's not having such a hard time? Other than gotcha. So like, so we just need to like see all of them. How do we unlock their auras? Do we have to like? Pray over them or something like. No, it has to happen on its own. It could take years. I'm not staying we, here for years. I'm not staying here. I'm not I mean, the whip cakes are good, but I don't really want to be here for that long. I no. have of places not. to go. Do you assume that potentially the farmers would know about the ores of their animals? Wait. Only one way to find out. He took the. Oh, I, um, I thought he took the. Oh, he took three animals from the farm from the same the same farm. Mm -hmm. But if he was mistaking the auras of the of okay, uh, I think most of us think it's that little girl, right? <laughs> Personally, I believe the boy. druid is an imbecile, but I agree. That's my own personal opinion. I think we need to go back to he, the the farm. I think we found another pig or something and had to eat this amulet that they would give off an aura that we could actually fake him out with. Mm. Maybe. I mean, it is clear that the druid also can't see auras so <laughs> no matter what we bring it wouldn't be as if he could 100% tell yeah because I mean well, he fucked up those other three right right but I mean he might not be able to tell the difference between the item and just what would be natural should we just trick him seems pretty stupid I think but that I mean if we leave and he comes back after realizing that we duped him and he take someone that's not solving the problem i will say that there's very little chance he won't even just start by attacking or taking aggressive measures when we step foot in the forest again or if we come with an animal then his blood will be on his hands i can't talk to animals so i don't know how to convince them to come with us eat food <laughs> <laughs> okay well whose animal are we gonna borrow oh, I could just purchase fun how much can an animal cost 10 gold like come on <laughs> how much could one gold animal. how much could one goat cost how much gold do you have Stavik uh, this is a very good question. Doesn't an elephant cost like 30 gold? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. An elephant? Elephants, elephants, elephants are the most cost effective like thing you can get <laughs> in any fucking D&D adjacent game. It's a, it's insane. It's so funny. 
Xander is going to pipe up and say, the mother seemed relatively satisfied when I offered 25 gold pieces in exchange for the animals in case we weren't able to bring them back. Yeah, so I mean, they're not that they're not that expensive. So like we could probably buy one from the farm or something. Well, I mean, what do we need? A chicken? That's a lot of gold. I don't think that we can, a chicken's going to be able to swallow this. Oh. Yeah. Without it being really obvious. I'm sure I would try. I mean, you could get the duck. Have you ever seen how the duck just just opens and just... Gah, 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 gah. What? A, a duck? Yeah. You should have, you just this thing is like down. the size of the dog's head. Hmm. The duck would have a differently shaped head afterwards. Pretty sure it would choke if I tried to eat that, yeah. I don't feel comfortable mm. with hurting animals. I don't think it seems like the, maybe the opposite mm. of what, what we should be it's, doing. I it's not really something yeah, I'm that's, comfortable that's with. Right. Um, so. Like a pig or a cow or something, is what I was going with. Yeah, but that's an uh, old goat, as we said. Can I ride the cow if we get a cow? I don't I mean, think it's a good cows. choice. It took a long time uh, to digest. Ask it. I can't. Kind of a, it's not kind of a weird question to like ask a, something if you can ride it. Is it? I, well, I don't know. Like it feels kind of. Weird. I don't know. Usually when I ask, I get a yes. Ah, I see what you did there. Bastion will hold out a hand to give a high five. Complete the high five. Would you like a ride, Valentino? You know. Perhaps, but I don't know if now is the time. Hmm. Um, Man, that didn't take long. Okay. Anyways, we're still kind of in state zero. What do we do? <sighs> well? We don't know how to see auras, maybe. I mean, Valentino does, but who knows when they'll unlock, apparently. Um, and You're catching up quickly. And once again, it is most likely that this man could just be insane. That is true. I suggest we perhaps split into three groups. One group to return to the farm to ask about the girl in question, since some of us believe that she might be the one he saw in the portents. Uh, one group to perhaps check on purchasing an animal and see if there are any strange goings-on around town related to other animals. That might be the animal touched by Eden, if he's correct. And the third group could perhaps just ask around in town about anyone who seems to be particularly fond of nature or who has been in contact with nature recently um, with strange or unusual results. I volunteer for visiting the children. If that's okay. I would join you for that, if you don't mind. Um, Even children really make me uncomfortable, so I'm fine with that. Okay. They uh, insist in looking me in the eyes. Stavik, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with you coming with me as long as you're not going to look someone in the eyes and explain how they need to explain how they felt after their loved one passed. Like right after their loved one died? Right after they died. Right after they died. I can make you that promise. Yes. Yeah. Can you not scare the children? It's a lot broader of a question. <laughs> I mean, that's dependent upon them, but I will do. That's my, dependent my, on my your best. actions. That's I'm not going to do anything creepy. Um, I mean, you. <laughs> any <laughs> Louis just waves his hand, kind of in a general sense towards stomach. Children Aww. don't tend to like people don't show their face. Yeah, it scares them. Well, then, I guess I will just go look at the animals. I guess. So you're not coming with me? Well, you, you, you think I? You think I? I just scared don't want you to be creepy. When I was scared of children. Uh, that is quite. Fine. I thought Stavik was paying for the animals. Yeah, weren't you paying for it, rich boy? Like, oh, your idea, right? 
That is fine, friend. Uh, together we could potentially deduce which one of these animals has a larger aura than the others, uh, statistically speaking. I like that idea. Okay, yes. Valentino, you seem like a people person, so asking around? Yeah, I think that's the right idea. I think you'd be good at that. Thank you. Of course. Um, Sander, you also seem very good at talking to people, and Mm. they like you, so I think that'd be a good idea, too. Sure. Bastion? I'm kind of good at everything, so... All right, just come with me and don't freak out the kids. (laughs) Oh, I gotta go... Man, I was hoping it wouldn't be the kid mission, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> Louis just stops. Never mind. You can go with Valentino. All right. <laughs> Turns goes with Valentino. Xander, you have rapport with the kids, right? That is correct. Come with me. All right. Are we all split up? Oh. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, it's a good uh, idea. Okay. We're in a town. This is yeah. this is a plan. All right. What's the worst that could happen? So we've got uh, team one talking to children. <laughs> I don't uh, like that team name. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so so all right, Louis. Do you want to describe what what your team is trying to accomplish and how you want to do that? I don't know. This was Xander's idea. I thought. <laughs> Xander mostly actually just wants to talk to the children and relay the message from the animals back to the little girl and let her know that she was completely justified in her uh, memory of what happened. Uh, He's going to try and keep that secret from the mother. Uh, And he also wants to ask the mother separately about the daughter's potentially overactive imagination and in what ways that has in the past come up. If Sander okay. does pull away the mother at some point, Louie's going to be doing magic tricks, but like literal magic with mm-hmm. making like ice butterflies and flowers for so, the so kids. So not magic tricks. N- just magic. He's magic. just showing the kids magic. magic. <laughs> are, are magicians disappointing when magic is real? You're like, how did they do that? And you're like, oh, it's spellcrafting. And they're like, yeah. oh, wait, it's school I again. This I sucks. I imagine it's a sleight of hand artists, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so it is Louis and Xander heading back to the Arroyo farm. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. in that case, the two of you make your way back to the Arroyo farm, and you find Valeria and her kids are working on the fields next to her house. So, um, thanks for letting me go to this one. <laughs> I don't believe it was a matter of letting you. You seemed well, very excited about it. No one stopped me, and I was just really excited. Hmm. That's good. And he, he starts to keep walking. So, not married. Do you have kids? I don't have kids. Neither do I. I really wanted them, though, once upon them? a time. Perhaps you'll get a chance to have them someday. Louis looks really sad for a moment. Um, I don't think it's meant to be, but it's a nice thought. Hmm. Come on, let's so go were see you them. Married? Louis turns around and keeps walking. Okay. Uh, Louis continues on until you make your way past the well in front of the house, and you can see the Arroyo family is working in the fields until the the young boy notices you. Oh, it's that man. Mama, that man's back. And Valeria will get up from her work hey. and walk over. Oh, oh hello. Um, did you need anything else? It was... Uh, Louis, right? Yeah, I'm I'm Louis. It's it's a pleasure to see you again, miss. Oh. It's quite all right. Any luck finding the animals? It, he looks back to get Xander's words on this one. Xander nods at Louis. Okay. 
Um, sort of. Yes. Oh, uh, that's great. Um, anything that we can do to help get them back sooner? They were very useful around the so farm. So they can talk now? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Your animals can talk now. They're sen sentient. Druid magic. Funny. Oh, dear. <laughs> Well, I suppose they were sentient before, it's just they couldn't communicate their thoughts and feelings, but now they can. So there's that. Doesn't... That doesn't exactly... sound great. Um, is there any way we can make them normal again? and get them back? Oh, God, I don't know. That's magic so far out of my range. <laughs> but uh, that's not the point. Um, <laughs> we're trying to. It's just that there, there happens to be a, a druid who's looking for a chosen of Eden, pretty much. Oh. All right. Uh, and he thought it was your animals at first, it's not, so we can't get to him right now, so we're looking for the person or being or animal or plant that he is actually looking for. I see. And you think that it's here on our farm? We just wanted to talk to you really quick. Sure, all right. What would you, what can I help you with? Um, Xander. Could you explain to me a little bit more about uh, Rebecca's active imagination? <laughs> um, sure. She's, well, uh, I mean, you know how little kids can be, especially when they're upset or alone. Uh, after we lost her father she became a bit more withdrawn and started to make up stories and at first they seemed normal but what she kind seems of to stories? prefer to live in her fantasies sometimes oh all kinds of strange things saying she sees things and flying through the air that aren't really there or that I mean, children she's tend to have an aptitude towards things like that, though. Yeah. She sometimes talks to people when there's no one around. Imaginary friends and the like. I mean, that's somewhat normal, right? Louis just gives a glance to Xander. Xander's nodding. Yes. I believe that's perfectly normal. Of course. And I mean, she did say that she saw things when the animals were taken, but I'm not sure how much of that could be true. I don't think cows can dance, so. Hmm. <laughs> well, anyway. Louis just looks away. Would we be able to talk to her very briefly, if that's all right with you? Sure, just don't frighten her. She spooks easily sometimes. We'll try our um, best. Rebecca, come here, please. All right, Logo, we're coming to get you. Come get you. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, we're we're scared. scared. <laughs> the clown masks. It's she, like clown. She says yes, Mama, and gets up from the field and brushes her hands off uh, of the dirt that was on them onto the front of her dress, and we'll walk over. Um, These two want to have a chat with you um, about some things Hi, I'll just be right I'll just be right here if you need me okay oh, okay mama and the child is going to look over at Louis and Xander look me between the two of you looking you right in the eye in that weird way that kids do that just makes you uncomfortable Louis they beaming haven't social, <laughs> they haven't learned social cues yet so they keep making eye contact inappropriately he's gonna um, crouch down so that he's at le eye level with her mm-hmm Hi, miss. 
Um, I'm Louie. I think you've met my uh, friend earlier, the Xander. Mm -hmm. You were here before. Yeah, I was. We just didn't really get to talk earlier. Can I show you a trick? Okay. And he'll reach out his left hand and produce a little ice butterfly. And from his hand, it'll start to flutter around and then land uh, on her nose for a moment before kind of popping into like magical dust. Louis, I would like actually both of you, I would like the both of you to make a perception check. Okay. Well, that happens. Blind, okay. if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. We are getting some bad rolls tonight. Oh. Okay, you guys aren't going to believe this unless I push this, but you got to see these. Oh, my God. Oh, Double are you that kidding one. me? That one. Double nat ones. You... Wow. <laughs> uh, that child eye contact is debilitating. Can someone debilitating. give Xander yep. a reroll? <laughs> 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 so this this child um you know it seems entertained by that <laughs> okay mm -hmm. that's about all you get from it so i can do magic have you okay. ever done something like this before no i i don't have magic like that that seems really fun do you have a different magic the kid like sh shuffles her feet and then shrugs. Mama says that everyone's special in their own way. My mama said that about me too. Tell me what makes you special, sweetheart. Mm. I like I like helping things grow and working on the farm. Mm -hmm. It's what it's what daddy used to do. Can you teach me? Sure. And the kid is going to walk forward, grab you by your hand. Okay. And walk you over oh, into the field. Oh. Mm -hmm. He he flinched a lot less when the child grabbed him. And the child is going to start explaining how to tend to the plants that are currently planted in this mm. farm field. <laughs> she starts explaining about how some plants are good and some plants are, are well, they're not bad plants. They're just in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And that is not good for the plants that they want. So... Sometimes you have to get rid of the plants that are in the wrong place, so that way the plants that are there can grow bigger and stronger. And how do you make them grow bigger and stronger? Well, they do that on their own because they get water and sunshine. Okay. And that makes them grow bigger and stronger. You just have to make sure that nothing is taking away their their food and water. Huh. So the plants that aren't supposed to be here, you, you pluck those and and you help the ones that are supposed to be here. And then when they get big enough, then you pull those, and that's where potatoes come from. Hmm. That's pretty impressive. I'm just ready for it to say, like, oh, you get ones that are in the wrong place, you pluck them and take their essence. <laughs> <laughs> and you uh -huh. their souls. Louis I... is looking back at Xander kind of with a begging expression of help. I don't know what else to ask. Okay. Xander is going to walk over after a little bit uh, and he will also crouch down and he's going to say, I talked to your mother a little bit ago and she mentioned that uh, you have some friends that she hasn't really interacted with before. like what do you she says have a, a friend that no one else can see no 
You don't? Kid, the kid looks away. Darn, because I have one too. I was hoping maybe they could talk. Um, sometimes I like to talk to plants and animals and tell them things and I'd like to be friends with them because they seem nice. I, I, I miss our pig and our cow and our horse. They were nice. They are I really used to brush nice. them and now I can't anymore and it's kind of lonely now. You know what? We actually met your cow, pig, and horse not too long ago. And they actually had a message for you. They do? They do. What is it? They wanted you to know that they are doing well. They are alive and healthy. And they're enjoying the forest. Okay. Can I go and see them? Or can they come home? So, I was listening to you have this conversation with Louis about plants and where they belong, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, your animal friends, they love you very much, but they feel like this farm isn't their true home. And they feel like the forest is. Oh. Did we do something bad to them? Did I, I don't think so. Not yet. Did I not no, treat you, them well enough? You were so good to them, and they said so. They mentioned you in particular. Mm -hmm. They said oh. that others perhaps cared for them, but... Why don't they want to come home, then? Special? Well, Charlie's afraid of being eaten. Make a perception check, please. Okay. <laughs> That's between the, for the both of you as well. I hope it was better than last time. Louis, mm -hmm. you notice the... You notice a, what I would consider a micro-expression. You, mm -hmm. you notice the child's eyebrow twitches just ever so slightly at the mention of the name of the pig. You knew his name, right? Charlie? Um, that's what I used to call him. But what about... Mama said we shouldn't name him because it was bad luck. Yeah. I think Mama was fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> what about Samuel? She now looks worried looking at you like like you're you're casting magic again <laughs> <laughs> i don't like this game it's no they, they told us their names how animals don't talk they talk to us you can talk to animals well they were able to talk what's, to us what's this one say and the kid is going to reach into a pocket and pull out a frog. Mm. What's this one say? <laughs> Louis just turns his head slightly. He says, "Hi, Paul. Why would let me get a pocket?" <laughs> I, I think I think I want to name this one Lily. Get it? Because like it's a lily, a lily pad. That's really really cute. But but I don't know if that's the right name. Can you tell? My name is Frederica. <laughs> Louis losing it, and he just looks at Xander with panic. Xander is going to turn and say, "Remember the the trick, the secret that I showed you last time we talked." I think so. So when we're saying the animals talked, it wasn't like that. 
they opened their mouths and voices came out, kind of like we talk right now. So just anybody can talk to them? I think that there is a special kind of magic for people who are very in tune with nature that allows animals and plants, perhaps, to communicate like we do. Hmm. Okay. And the child is going to put this frog back in a, a pocket. Um, I still want to see them again. Are you sure they can't come home? I think that's their decision now. And I'm a little worried to take you into the forest. I mean, I go in there sometimes. It's not like too far in because mom says that there's things in there that could eat up mm -hmm. little kids and I should not go in there because then they might do that. But I don't know. It seems seems kind of fun. And sometimes sometimes uh, Ricardo and me, we bet each other about who can go further and we each take another step than the other one does. And, and at that point, Ricardo goes, shut up. <laughs> no, sorry. We don't play that game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got it. Well. Has there been anything else you've really been able to do besides talking to the plants and such? And talking to your animals? Is there anything that maybe you've told your mom that she said was special? I mean, she tells me that I shouldn't talk to things so much because they can't answer things like the plants and animals and stuff. But And they've never answered you before? She shrugs. Just try to be nice to them, you know? I think that's very commendable. But if they ever have answered back, Louis holds out his pinky. I promise to keep it a secret. The kid seems a little bit worried to answer, and we'll just shake her head no. Okay. No. No one's allowed to break pinky promises, though, I can assure you. Mama said that if you break, break a pinky promise, it means someone has to break your pinky. So I'm scared of them. I don't want yeah. my pinkies broke. Well, what if I pinky What if I pinky promise never to break your pinky, but you could break mine if you wanted? Doesn't doesn't seem fair, but okay. I pinky promise not to tell anybody about your secrets, okay? Especially not your mom. Who's right behind you? And the kid will We'll take your pinky with theirs and shake. So, have they? No, I don't think so. No? But okay. I I like to be friends with them anyway. I once I once dug a trench and I filled it with water and I let a bunch of stuff grow in there and in the springtime there were tadpoles. Very cool. <laughs> And that's where I found Lily. Hmm. But then there... I went into the woods. Uh, not with Ricardo. <laughs> and then and then in the woods I saw um I saw birds and I think I saw a deer. Wow. But I I left because it was starting to get dark and I shouldn't be that far in the woods after the sun goes down. Because mm -hmm. then mom would get upset. Of course. And I don't want to make her sad because she, she's sad enough. 
Is there anything that you would like to maybe say to your friends if you could pass a message to them? Mm, I miss them and I want them to come home. Oh. Okay. I'll try my best to let them know. Okay, thank you. Of course. You're I should welcome. get back to work. The plants need me. They do. Thank you for talking with us. I really appreciate it. She nods, goes back, and starts digging through the farm again, pulling out the plants that aren't supposed to be there. Should we talk to Ricardo at all, or do you think you have everything you need? I think we're fine. Okay. He just shifts between his heels and his toes for a moment. So, should we get to the others? That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Uh, as the two of you begin to leave, you see in the tree to the southwest of you, something catches your eye. Louis, specifically, you spot this. There appears to be a glinting reflective thing up in one of the high branches of the tree. Louis is going to instinctively walk towards it. Okay. You walk toward that tree and up in one of the higher branches is an, an object hanging from one of the branches that appears to be reflecting light uh, in an odd way that doesn't appear natural. Sander? Sander will make his way over. Um, could you... Could you help boost me up? There's there's something in... in Up in the tree, in the branches. He will put his hands together to give him a boost up. Okay. I'll take a climb check from Louis. <laughs> Sander, you can make an assist if you'd like. Nat, I once, can try. Nat, once, Nat, once, Nat, once. Oh my god. That is a 17 for me. Let's go! <laughs> oh shit! I'm sorry! Oh We're no! Eight nat ones tonight, I believe. And I've, is... We've done so many! So tonight's many. Wow. tonight! This is incredible, everybody. I'm I'm just impressed. Louis, we, you... Wow! You begin to climb up this tree, and mm -hmm. then the branch you're climbing is going to snap, and you're going to fall back to the ground. Xander, please make a reflex save, and before we reveal the results of that save, we're going to take a quick break. All right. <laughs> Sounds great. And we're back. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> so, we last left off with Louis attempting to climb a tree, being boosted up by Xander, and having it going... Not the best, uh, as the, I believe, eighth nat one has reared itself in this same session. Xander, you had an attempt to catch Louis with a reflex save? Yep. Good news, it's not a nat one. Good news, okay. it's not a nat one. That's true, everybody. Do you want to guess what it is? Nat two. Ten? Screw You got it. <laughs> two. Oh shit, I'm two for two tonight. Progress oh progress. no. Sorry, we'll take it. Yeah. Yep. So, Xander, you attempt to catch Louis, but you are unable to. And Louis, you are going to splat on the ground mm -hmm. and you're going to take four points of falling damage in the process. Instantly killing him. The children <laughs> are going to walk over <laughs> curiously to watch and see what the two of you are trying to do. You see his hands are clutching the back of his head as he kind of squirms a little bit, making just groaning noises. <laughs> Ow. Um, mister, maybe you shouldn't be climbing trees. There's something up there. I just wanted to grab it. I'm so sorry. Could what I, with my height and my mm -hmm. pole arm, mm -hmm. perhaps reach it? It's a little bit beyond even that reach. Okay, good to know. Would you like to climb the tree and try to use your pole arm to knock it down? <clears throat> hmm, why not? Okay, I'll take a climb check. You got so this. So as, as Louis is reeling and holding the back of his head, 
Xander, you uh, you square your shoulders and set yourself to the task. That is a 16. Excellent. You begin climbing up the tree, shimming your way up until you make it high enough that you can unfurl your polearm, reach it out, and with a very quick slice, uh, cut off the branch that is supporting this shiny object. It's going to fall and land pretty much beside Louis. Louis, if you'd like to catch it, you can make a reflex save. I'll try. Please don't be as bad. Please, I'm begging you. Oh, a natural 20. Yay. Hey. Hey. That was not as bad. Not as bad. All right. So, Louis, you reach out and you you grab this before it hits the ground. And it's this little section of, of branch, maybe a foot long, has some leaves still on it. And nestled in this cluster of leaves is a bundle of acorn. And one of them appears to be made of silver. Huh. Hey, Xander. Yeah? We got silver down here. Hmm. Xander's gonna try and make his way back down. Please be safe. He's still rubbing the back of his head. <laughs> <laughs> that is a six. That is a six. You lose your grip, but you're able to slide down without hurting yourself. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. And Louis will gingerly unravel his hands to show the acorns. How do the kids react? Oh, are you showing the kids that? I was showing Xander. Okay. Okay. Uh, Xander is going to study the acorn and try and detect magic on it. You got it. So you use Detect Magic on the acorn, and what it appears is that there is a bit of a bit of magic still wrapped into this thing. It seems to be charged with positive energy, of all things. Hmm. So I suppose if you want to slap an arcane school on that, it would be Conjuration, but uh, okay. it is specifically positive energy that is suffusing this. Fascinating. Heal you. Would I yeah. make a spellcraft? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. May I too? Okay. Uh, as well as the knowledge of religion. Yeah. Oh, cool. Let's do it. Excellent. I don't think you could. Is a seventeen for my spellcraft? Okay, my knowledge of religion is a unnatural twenty, and then my spellcraft is a nat twenty. Yeah. Hey! Oh, yeah. <laughs> And my knowledge religion is a 28. I got a 31 so, as my total. <laughs> so I just want you all to know that I, during the break, I, I took the foundry server out back and I, I whipped it into shape because we were getting too many nat ones. So now mm. it's definitely be going to behave from now on. Okay. So, thank you, DM yeah. daddy. Good. Yeah. yeah Was yeah, that yeah. three nat 20s in a row? Did I get that right? No, not quite nat 20s. One was an okay. unnatural 20. I had two unnatural 20s. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did get a 19. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So luck is turned. Anyway, so you look at these things and it's a bundle of acorns and there's like, I don't know, five or six of them in this bundle. They're all growing off the section of, of the tree. Uh, and one of them is made of shiny silver, whereas the other ones appear natural. Mm -hmm. a anything else? Oh, so the, so the religious significance, obviously. Yeah, let's get to that. Uh, <laughs> so the item itself is significant in a way that this would be considered a sign or portent to anyone that was versed in Eden uh, or Edenite philosophy. So mm -hmm. typically when a, a seed or a nut, like a nut or some something natural... Um, what would normally be like an offspring of a tree or plant if it were to be replaced with a precious metal that's usually uh, a sign that something in that region uh, a, typically a, the offspring of something that has just been born is considered holy or sacred or blessed by Eden or touched or however you want to look at it um, 
oftentimes druids use that as a means to sort of suss out who should be in, you know, who should pit take up the the leather, I guess mm -hmm. is a way to look at it. You know, who takes up the sickle and teaches the next generation? Who who becomes the next generation of druids? Okay. Louis going to turn and go towards the kids. Hey, look what I found. And he'll kneel down and, and show the acorn in between his pointer finger and his thumb. And just show mm. them the silver acorn. The kids look at it and they're they're both like in awe of it. Wow, is that real silver? I don't know. Do you want to touch it? Yeah. And they both like like touch it and pass it back and forth between each other and are looking at it and turning it over and over. Do they they're, they're both fascinated by it? Does it seem to react at all? No. Oh, okay. when the little girl touches it. <laughs> Does, they, <laughs> yeah. They, the acorn neither reacts nor explodes. Mm -hmm. Does the mother react at all? Yeah, does she explode? <laughs> 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 what? Yeah. No. She stands oh, back lab. about 10 feet and she's just confused looking at this. And she's probably suspects that this is likely magic from the two of you. But she, mm -hmm. she says nothing. She just stands there and watches okay. this. Figuring you're probably still trying to entertain the kids. May I have it back? Oh, okay, sure. And they, the Thanks. kids hand you this acorn back. And... I bet you could sell it and buy lots of those cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Louis just looks down at the acorn, forming a thought for a moment, and then looks back at Xander. Well, there wasn't really anything that happened. Uh, are, are we doing this wrong? I mean, there is a possibility that this was just an incorrect hypothesis, but... He is going to reach behind uh, Rebecca's ear and he's going to pull out a gold coin. I think you can use this to buy some of those cakes. <gasps> oh my gosh. And the kid <laughs> runs over to mom. <laughs> so mom, mom, look. And Valeria will look at the kid and look at the coin and then look back at the two of you and says, and says that that's amazing, Rebecca. Um, yeah, we'll... Tell you what, after we're done with our work today, we'll we'll go down into town and we'll get you both a treat, okay? And the the kids both like squeal in joy and run off to do their chores faster. Louis has Shall a fake smile, and then he looks at Xander <laughs> and just moves his finger, asking him to like lean down. Xander will lean down. You're gonna get these kids killed. You can't How just you give figure? gold to children. People will take that from them or hurt them to get it. This is Kenny trauma. <laughs> <laughs> this is Kenny trauma. Get, here's a sack of gold, you little little messenger child. You can't I just learned my I... fucking lesson. You don't give money to kids, <laughs> right? I gave the gold to the children in view of their mother who would collect the gold from them to use more responsibly. And that's true. The, the mom already did take the gold from them. He's New still headcanon. upset. New headcanon is that Louis is the child that Soul <laughs> gave the money to. Mm -hmm. got, oh, got, wow. beat up, got beat up, and that's where all the scars shit. are from. I didn't think that oh, this is session shit. three, and someone's already cracked the backstory. Nailed it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's that hysterical. That was not on, okay. on my bingo card. That is a legit great character concept, though. <laughs> like, holy shit. <laughs> Sorry, Kenny. Shit. They, they got you figured out this early. <laughs> it happens. Dang. And then Louie turns over to the mom. Um, Just in case, would you mind touching this acorn before we head out? Um, It's not going to hurt me or something, is it? No, it's just a I silver don't acorn. really understand oh, magic explode. that much. Um... It seems pretty docile. Nothing's happened. See, I could... And he... He kind of moves it so that it flips between his fingers a little bit. Mm-hmm. See? Kind of walk it across your knuckles. Mm-hmm. Make a slight of hand check. Oh, no. Why nice. must you... Why must you do this to me? <laughs> Positive energy bomb. It explodes, okay. and it heals 19. everyone around it. Um, Ooh. Yeah. 
So, Louis, you you walk this across your knuckles, and it's very impressive looking. Nice. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. just and a, go ahead. Just a poke. Uh, sure. She reaches forward and she touches it. Nothing I, happens. Is that real silver? I don't know. Well, uh, didn't you make it? He puts it in his pocket. Um. No. <laughs> then someone then he leaves. <laughs> well, then who who put that there? It didn't I just mean, grow on the tree. Supposedly, a silly goddess. Maybe grows those sometimes. <laughs> it's a sign from Eden. A sign for what? She says, stepping forward. Louis grits being, his teeth. <laughs> being a little, a little more worried sounding. A sign that someone is blessed or graced with her favor. Well, I don't understand what that means exactly, but I'm I don't little... know. She gets like some sort of chosen one vibes or something, apparently. Okay, and is that why our animals were taken? The druid in question believed that one of the animals was the recipient of this blessing from Eden, but he was mistaken. Hold on a second. So typically, the person that is chosen by Eden becomes like the druid of the order, right? That is that what I heard right from the description? Uh, they they are sort of yeah, it, it, kind of. It means that they're destined to have a life of natural significance within the organization. Basically, Are you telling it's, it's me a, a fucking to... horse was going to be part of that organization? <laughs> That's what that druid thought, yeah. On his third try. <laughs> I just imagine walking yeah, this... into a church of Eden. There's a fucking <laughs> horse right in the front. Yeah, and there's the horse standing. The pulpit. Yeah, the horse just stands there and he goes, and then it rained, and everyone was happy Sweat. <laughs> that it rained. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> and everyone clapped. To <clears throat> offend Samuel, everyone. Yeah, we'll get there. So, yeah. <laughs> the first face coming out of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that's... <laughs> I mean... It is an acorn. Should we just bury it? Perhaps. Do you have any knowledge of Druid's contact with anyone who may have been an Edenite? She shakes her head no. I've never met a Druid before. Hmm. They seem like scary people. Hmm. Louis shrugs, unsure. It might be a good idea to take this back. Okay. It yeah. might make him more willing to talk to us, if nothing else. Louis looks at the acorn and then holds it out to Xander. I don't want to hold on to this. <laughs> Understood. I think you buried him in a gross little tree. <laughs> so. With that, the two of you gather your things. Valeria will thank you for the gold coin as well as entertaining the kids. And she wishes you the best of luck in dealing with this spooky druid character. So you all begin to head back to the town proper. Although it doesn't and... matter. Yes. Uh, Louis is going to have dancing lights going and they're just little blue ice butterflies that float near him. And he's just looking at them and making them twirl around for fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you all make your way back to Bacares, and while you're heading there, uh, whom is the next group, and what is their mission? I suppose it is Operation by a Stupid Animal. Yeah. Operation by a Stupid Animal. All right, who is on <laughs> Operation mm -hmm. by a Stupid Animal? Stavix, Coin, and Zulin. 
Yep. So we need to get something that we can fit that medallion down their throat without hurting them, obviously. So, um, nothing smaller than a goat. But I think we don't want to get it overkill. He's already done a horse, a, um, a, a, a cow, and a pig. So, uh... I, Co I correct me, friend. Are you planning on feeding the amulet to the animal? Um, well, we just... Uh, I think a goat might be the best op option because they'll eat anything, really. And, and so you, the answer was yes, then. Yes. So I don't believe we have to feed the amulet. In fact, I believe this entire endeavor to be uh, fruitless, to be frank. Bye. There seems to be very little chance that this small pocketed community would have a so-called blessed livestock. I mean, you never know. The world is very big, and any one particular place is as good as any other. So it could be that this just happens to be the random place that we happen to be rocking by, and that there's a, there's a goat that is blessed by a deity. Now that I'm just, just talking it out, it's the, the, the numbers just astronomical, I think, would be the way to describe it. It also would be quite strange for one to have been born in such a location. But once again, the rules of the gods is not something I am well versed in. No, the gods can be very uh, interesting, and gods that are uh, that that are quiet, or gods that are that that speak in riddles, or um, that their signs are a little bit on the weird portion. Um. Uh, do you think we're just gonna have to kill this 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 druid? It is a potential either that we could just leave and tell the authorities in a larger town to send guards for the thief, as he might be more dangerous. Well. Need I state that? Uh, th Hurdling lightning at someone is quite potent magic. The lightning bolt did kind of make an impression. <sighs> but I suppose it is our mission to look. So, and Zulon's going to look around. And okay. is there anyone like walking around? Yeah, there's there's plenty of folks in the town. Excuse various... me, friend. Uh, oh, uh, hello. Where could I, perchance, uh, look to buy livestock? Oh, uh, you'd probably have to visit one of the farms. We don't really have like a animal market here in town, but lots of the farms have animals. Some of them might be willing to part with them for coin. D are there any notable farms that you know of, friend? Uh, that one? And he points to, <laughs> he points to one of the closest farms. It's just to the east of town. And they have f fine animals that you know of, or? Oh, sure. Most of these places do. Quite wonderful. Thank you, friend. I'll turn to Stavik. Shall we? Yes. Uh, I don't know how much they will cost. <laughs> Well, leads away. All right, we're going to make our way to this uh, farm that this man has pointed out. Excellent, excellent. All right, you head over to that farm, and it is a couple of large buildings, a barn, 
and a bunch of fields. Some of them have fences around them. You approach and you can see that there are a number of people out working in the wonderful weather that you're having today. Well, overcast, but still. Uh, hello, is anyone here that I could potentially look at any animals for purchase? All right, you approach the farm and hail the first person you see. They look at you a little strangely and say, uh, I mean, I suppose so. You, you look a bit oddly dressed for someone who buys animals. What do you want it for? Well, um, mm. we are having a party later on. Um, it, 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 we, we are thinking of, of serving goat, if, if that is okay. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, we've got one of our older goats, probably good for meat. Uh, sure. Uh, um, do you have a, um, actually, do you have possibly one that might be a little younger? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, yeah, we can get one of these here. And they, they will lead you to one of their outbuildings, which is like a smaller stable. And inside are a dozen goats. They end up grabbing one of the younger ones. Looks like it's it's small enough that the, the person who gets it actually just grabs it and like puts it around their head to <laughs> kind of carry it on their shoulders and walks out of the stable with it and it, it's sort of just looking around almost confused were we able to join them as they were grabbing the animal yeah, you can look into the building sure yeah as you no know, i'd like to look at the uh each animal just like see mm -hmm. if any of them look like they have a greater aura <laughs> <sighs> uh, sure make what? me a knowledge religion check you got it <laughs> holy oh, shit yeah. that's a 23 yeah, uh, you look around at these goats, and and this this one that this person's going to hand you, this younger goat, it has a just an amazing aura, just one of the best auras you've ever seen. I can almost guarantee this might be the best one. It looks at you and goes, "Meh." Oh. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> this one's gonna be perfect. Um, how 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 much for the goat? They will offer you two gold pieces is going to be their, their ask for it. Perfect. That is a more than fair price, I believe. For this okay. absolutely stunning goat and compliments to, to, to your herding. All right. Uh, so who's buying the goat? I will. Okay. Do you have any money? I thought we had that uh, money from the, from the what do you call it? You, the, the party the funds have them. I, okay, so the party's buying the goat. Okay, you said I am, so yes. I wasn't sure if you meant personally. Oh yeah, yeah. I I was gonna okay. take from my portion of that. Okay, well I'll I'll just deduct a gold piece from the party inventory. Then. There we go. Thank so you so much. You take out a gold piece, and you hand it to this person, and sorry, two gold pieces rather. Yes. Two gold pieces out of there. And you hand them two gold coins, and he will hand you a very confused goat. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. It looks at you as you, you hold it, and it looks up in your eyes, and it goes, eh. Oh. When the goat looks Hello. into his eyes, what does he see? Well, you don't know. You don't speak goat. Yeah. You see, you see an animal that has horizontal pupils. And it weirds you out. An eldritch horror. Really? Yeah, yeah. No, like no, no animal should have have. No animal should have rectangular mm -hmm. irises. Rectangular it's, it, horizontal <laughs> irises that look like. I mean, you've seen a satyr before. I mean, they have horizontal pupils. They got the horizontal pupils and the human yeah. voices. Goats are eldritch horrors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. I mean, they have the they have the eyes of a sea beast. They look yeah. at you with those those sea beast eyes and say, "Free me!" And the stomach of a dumpster. <laughs> it's true; they can eat anything. <clears throat> but anyway, it looks at you and just um, lets out a meh. Meh. No, this no. is perfect. I, that would be this that would have been a sheep, wonderful, sir. 
That would have well, been a shit. They don't go bad. They don't go bad. <laughs> there you go. Maybe this one does. No, that would make it a sheep. And it's That's definitely not a sheep. A sheep. We are not getting a sheep. Not by You're getting sheep. a goat. Getting a goat. So you have a young goat. So here. getting our yep. goat got. So we will mm -hmm. make our way back to the um I guess we split up at the church. Yeah, that's where you split up. Yeah. Oh, we will head our way back to the church. All right. You make your way back to the church. The farm will thank you for your time and you peace out, head your way back to the church, and that will take us over to Valentino and Bastion, I believe. Yes. So, Bastion, we are tasked with finding as many people so we can scan our auras as possible, yes? Yeah, but, like, how do you scan an aura? Or is that... I'll you take care of that. Them? Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. We're okay. going to have to find a place where the like, most people are congregating. I gotta be honest, I don't know the first thing about scanning auras. I'm, I'm, I'm decent at a lot of stuff, but, like, aura scanning? Not really my, <laughs> my thing. Uh, but I, whatever it is, I've got it covered. You don't have to worry. But, I mean, like, gathering people up? I can do that. Well, I think we've already got the place where they're gathered. And it just so happens to be the place where they're serving all those whip cakes. Valentino, oh. <laughs> have I told you that you're the smartest person on this team? Not enough times, but I appreciate it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking guy. <laughs> the two of them head over to the wonderful, wonderful place that sells whip cakes. Gotta whip get that whole <sighs> whip. Indeed. <laughs> All right. I can't believe I wasted an 18 looking for a fucking goat. <laughs> hey. It's a uh, good goat, though. That goat's the goat. goat. You that got goat's going to protect us. I swear. That's true. That goat's going to save your life. All right. So, Valentino and Bastion, you make your way to the crusty churn. And inside, it once again smells like brown sugar and whipped cream. It's wonderful. Yeah, I don't have anything specific to address. Okay. Uh, I'm sure that, like, yeah. out of character, I don't think anyone here is what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, Valentino will, will use his scouter to determine <laughs> the power levels of everybody in the room. And, <laughs> that sounds great. So what I'll do, so all I need from you then is just give me a perception check. And while all you're right. doing that, I'm going to have Bastion, uh, you know, do some do some other business in here as well. So Val, you spend some time scoping out the crowd, sizing people up, and you know, really just trying to get to the 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 bottom of who here has powerful aura, you know? And Other as than you, myself, of course. Oh, obviously. It it's, makes it difficult. Mine drowns out. It's true. It, it's it's interfering with the others around you, so it makes it hard. But as you look around, you see all these these weak auras of farmers and and merchants and travelers and just random townsfolk commoners and and they all just seem to be you know pretty low tier in your opinion they're like oh yeah these, these guys are pretty weak pretty weak pretty weak and as you're getting through that bastion's gonna come up and he has an armload of these whip cakes and he's just gonna like hand you three of them I all right we're of the same mind here here's those and uh i got more here if you uh run into those three but oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not really sure um, what we should be doing with this stuff. Cause like, even if we find the person with the aura, like how does that actually help us stop this guy from just kidnapping these people? If it is one of these people, you know, like what is it really, what good does it do us to know who it is really? If, if all it means is it just lets this guy know who to steal. I just want to know who the, if anyone knows who the fuck Bruno is. Hey, does anybody know Bruno? Hey, does anybody know Bruno here? <laughs> Bruno? No? No, nobody knows, nobody knows who Bruno is. Nobody knows who Bruno is. Hmm. So this guy just has some serious beef with these people. Now I don't even fucking know who he is. I don't know, man. I guess if you we live in the woods, it kind of makes you weird, right? I mean, I couldn't imagine being normal if I was raised in the woods, because, like, my best friends would be, like, trees and mushrooms and shit. No one here seems to fit the bill. 
which is honestly, I think, probably the best idea. Well, yeah, I mean, but I would hate it if it was like, here. could you imagine if it was like the person that makes these cakes? What if they were the one that were going to be taken away? That like, I would not allow that to happen. Right? I would like fight to save that person's life any day. It's be struck up. down on an instant. Couldn't but imagine. I don't, I don't believe that's the case. I'm no. thinking perhaps as a plan B, C, that we uh, perhaps we can get him to come here. See that it's no, no one who he's looking for is here. Nobody who knows him, they're not going to mob up and attack him. His concerns about his safety are not really a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we can get them, convince him that he's not finding what he's looking for and leave. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like, I mean, it sounds like the best move because, like, I don't, I don't know if, like, fighting him is a great idea because, like, just in the off chance that he hits one of us with that lightning, like, that could really, really hurt. If he hits one, uh, someone else, yeah. Right, right. Like, if he hit, like, I could me, probably repel it. Or, like, yeah. if he hit, like, Stavik. Honestly, like, he was glad last time when he when I came down that I didn't just slice it in half like I normally do with my RPR. Sure, yeah. Yeah. But, like, what if he, like, does that thing with the plants again and holds us all in place and then just, like, goes down the line and like obviously not you because you'd like dodge that Bro, away you're not stuff. scared of a few plants are you i'm just saying like if mm -hmm. i can't move and i get with lightning like i it's don't know like how a I'm bunch gonna... of ropes on the ground wait what the the plants they're just like ropes sitting on the ground yeah but they're like ropes that like hold me to the spot and then i get hit with a lightning bolt like i mean i don't know how i'm supposed to deal with that i mean if I can, you're like, slow, try to, I, think, I guess i could try to like tuck and roll or something but like <laughs> yeah you got this i don't know just, Seems like a weird idea. Well, I mean, yeah, it's not plan A for sure. But, I mean, you and me, we could gank this fucker's throat while he's not looking. No problem. Okay. I mean, I, you I think this guy was... knows how to deal with a real couple of rogues like us? I mean, uh, if he doesn't see us coming, maybe. Like, maybe I could, like. What if I, like, split off from the group and, like, hid? And then, like, came around from the other side and, like, we pincered him. This Not the pincer plan move. again. <laughs> It'll well, who the fuck said that? But the pincer was the best part of that plan, all right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, I think that'll work perfectly. Like, so I'll, I'll sneak around. And then when the rest of the group gets there, I'll, like, you know, Swap come out of hiding. Fire. And we'll get yeah. him from behind. And you get him from the front. And we'll take him out. Probably. This is why we work together, like well, yeah. bread and butter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he'll take another bite of whipped cake. Yeah. And and the two of you uh, make your way out of the crusty churn and start walking back to the temple at around the same time that the other two members, or other two teams, rather, of their sub-teams of the group make their way back as well, and the party is reunited. Who was holding the goat? Stavik was, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stavik is holding a goat. Mm -hmm. I was not expecting an animal we could carry. I was kind of hoping for something bigger. Well, um, it had to be young mm -hmm. enough for them, right? It had to be recent, I thought. You decided you wanted a younger animal? Yes. So... You made that decision? Uh, to be fair, I believe that I have made a spiritual connection to this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, um... As mm. best as I could, of course. I'm... That sounds pretty serious. ...really happy for you. <laughs> Can I examine it? Oh, sure. Yo. <laughs> And take uh, that was out of character. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You can. <laughs> do, do you want to examine the goat? Yes, please. Yeah, certainly you can. Yes, I'll take a knowledge nature. Okay, that is a uh, fifteen. Okay, you think that this is uh, a nice, decent representation of a goat, uh, a quintessential goat, if you will, hmm. a, a very standard template goat at least a goat if you will yeah i think yeah. if if, the, if someone were to conjure in their mind a young goat 
this is likely what comes to their mind. It's brown with a little bit of white markings, some black markings along the face and neck, a, a little little neck dobble thing hanging down. It, it's very goat-like all across a this goatee. region. goatee? Yeah. You've chosen the every goat. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be the best way to do it. It, uh, it, it, it looks like the best representation and it might fool them enough that they I see toggle what you're off thinking. back to the... You took the idea yeah. of finding someone extraordinary and look for the most extraordinary you could. Does it make sense? Exactly. And it, they, they will take them and toddle back off to, off to the Edenites and leave this town alone forever. And I would like to uh, put in my two cents to coppers that is... <laughs> that we should not be feeding the uh, emblem to the goat Stavik. Why would that? you feed it to the goat? So that it gave off an aura of um, extraordinariness? Why don't we just tie with a cord or something to it instead of because forcing an animal it. to... I'm not going to force it. No, fuck that. It. Stavik. If we fed the amulet to the goat, and hypothetically that allowed someone to detect the aura of the amulet within the goat, would they not be able to tell that the aura wasn't coming from something within the goat, but rather, like, how would they be fooled by that? Yeah, what what power happens power when the goat shits it, it out? Well, they would be gone by then. It's a wooden amulet, like... How long is it well, going so, to so, take? So, 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 wait. So, 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 he's already he's already messed up three times. <laughs> oh, I know. You you are. I love how Stavik is being made to answer for my plan. This is honestly <laughs> hilarious to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to be a running like fucking gag in this. Also, I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> so, no. Yeah, this, this druid has messed up our race three times, so he's 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 eager to, um, to 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 find the right the the, the chosen one, and um. I mean, notably that was my phrasing. So well, that's but it's a fair point. If he's he's so can, look if he fucking thought he was Samuel, he's not. He clearly doesn't have the best observational <laughs> skills on this fucking matter. I mean, it's an Eden. What judgment. can you expect? He does speak to animals, though. You realize that if this goat just tells him that it's a oh, normal shit. goat, that plan wouldn't work. I thought well, we just wanted to be uh, friends with the goat so that, you know, we could have safety in numbers. Is we it, don't know who this is, right? They don't know who they are, do they? No, I mean, the it, goat might think it's a wait, goat. Are we, just like, are we just, like, working on, like, a bunch of different plans at the same time? Or do we actually have, like, a plan plan? We well, found a silver acorn. <laughs> Where? Turn to Louis. Wait, what? At the farm? At the farm. Yeah, you didn't open Sander. with that? Oh. Yeah, that sounds like a, a bit of a starter. I mean, no one really asked, with that next actually. Time. I would not have thought to... Uh, I, I mean, I could have thought to ask, but I mean, we had... I mean, yeah, uh, you're the great and amazing, cool, fantastical oh, Valentino. This is great! This is, and this illustrious. Is a great idea. Exactly. And illustrious. Mm. Oh! No, no this is great. This is, this is a really good idea. So, no, no. We, 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 tell, we tell them we found the silver acorns where the goat was. I'm not gonna lie. I can lie. I don't give a shit. F why not? Get them the fuck out of here. The acorn is smaller. We could potentially feed the acorn to the goat. Uh, well, I mean, I was kind of curious if maybe we planted it, if anything would happen. We could get like a silver tree. Mind that shit. Dude, could you like grow silver? That'd be crazy. I don't know. It's either that or we just show the druid that we have one as a sign of faith. I mean, it might help like win him over or something, right? Yeah. It's one of us, is this? No, it's not me. That's for fucking sure. But of course, I mean, it's not who I mind, but the, I'm open to suggestions. I just, we started off on the wrong foot, obviously. I didn't help. I want to make it right. And perhaps if we can 
talk to him more eloquently by proving that we're just trying to help with these items, maybe we can get somewhere. So let's take things but a step it's a What happened with, with the farm then? You found this acorn, what happened? Well, I had the kids look at it, but nothing happened. Is Even something the mom. supposed to happen? I don't Nobody know. Nobody exploded? Nobody exploded. I believe it's mostly important, though it is filled with um, a certain amount of energy. So he's got the right farm. It's like a bomb? No, it's it's positive energy. So I suppose it could theoretically be a bomb, but it wouldn't like do anything to you unless you're dead. Can I see it? He will hand it over. Bastion looks at it, smells it, licks it. Yeah, it's silver. Indeed. It's so weird. Which is why we and should not feed it to the goat. throws it as hard as he can at the ground, and it, it hits the ground and just bounces ever so slightly, and then comes to a stop. I was hoping Louis it would do takes his left hand do. and grabs the collar of bro. Are you fucking what? kidding me? I thought it would do something cool. That could have killed us. We don't know. They said it was. Uh, have... What it hurt? They said it was positive energy. Fuck That's you. like healing. That's like healing magic and shit, right? We don't know. You have a lot. <laughs> what? That could have. What? You're worried that I would have healed you too much or something? Come on. I don't know. Well, like, how are we supposed to find out don't otherwise? Don't go like, fucking throwing around magical objects! All right, fine. What is he with you it. people? And he just releases <laughs> the collar and pushes him. <laughs> he laughs and pick, picks up the acorn. Okay. It's fine. Like, it no, didn't do anything. you're grounded. You're not allowed to have that. Uh, fine. Who wants to carry the little silver acorn? Mm. <laughs> Take it. He hands it to Valentino. There do you, you have a lot of intrusive thoughts? No, nah, I just pretty much do them. <laughs> <laughs> I believe they're only classified as intrusive thoughts if you actively don't want to be experiencing them. <laughs> just, just you know, arms gesturing towards Xander. Exactly. They seem to be extrusive. <gasps> mm -hmm. Anything. Invasive. Yeah, like you would be I get a good thought. idea and I, I do it. it. Like, that's my life, right? <laughs> extrusive action. That's the only way to live. Yeah. Right. Get a good idea. Do good idea. It's great. <laughs> So we it's an idea that a stupid this. person would tell you, don't do it. Exactly. We go back to Bruno, tell him we found an acorn and what? I mean, honestly, like, I think Louis' plan's pretty good. Like, we got the acorn, we got the talisman thingy, like, maybe he'll friend? take us. Yeah, we brought a goat now, so, like, maybe maybe he'll, like, not be a dick this time. His name You're just going to give him the talisman? I mean, kind of belongs to him, doesn't it? Sort Does of. It? I don't think uh, nature belongs yeah. to anything. Yeah, that's a weird coming from no. you too, also, bro. I mean, like it's no, not. I mean, it's, we could totally keep it, now. I guess, but like, I don't know. It has like Eden symbol on it, and he's like an Eden guy. Like, that makes it his, right? But there's, but there's more Eden guys out there. Could be one of them. Yeah, but like the Eden guys that were like from this woods. I mean, like they were the ones that came from this woods and like went there. So like, I don't know. It just seems they, like it's the same group. They were also friendly with the townspeople and he is decidedly not. So well, maybe we just need to like convince him to be friendly. Then let's do that. I mean, shit, it's been like 60 years. The guy wasn't that old. So like, Maybe he just doesn't know better. Do we by any chance know how long these incidents have been occurring? What, like the animal th shit? Yes, uh, potentially with this exact druid. I think this is recent know. based on how yeah. they were talking. They'd... Perhaps we could just have the family uh, visit another town for an extended time. In which case, the potential uh, silver acorns, as you found, uh, would stop appearing, and he would leave. Well, I mean, unless it's one of the animals. Didn't didn't they already take all the animals from this place? Yeah, they took all the livestock from the Arroyo farm. Yeah. Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. Also, yeah. there there are no more livestock animals Unle at that farm, unless it's the frog. 
Could be the frog. That's true. I don't know what the frog. frog. It's a good frog. It's good. I mean, slowly. Ask about the frog. Good frog. So, should we go to the forest again? So we're not giving the god the amulet. Let's not waste a magical item, even if it is disgusting. Sounds like we're going to waste it anyway. But you know, all right. Gonna, I, I was Never pocketing a whip that. cake to shove the amulet into. <laughs> uh, and since that's not going to be a thing, I'll just give the goat the whip cake. I don't know if that's healthy for... Oh, okay. Yeah, well, if he can talk to goats, it's going to vouch for us now. Louis <laughs> gently <laughs> touches the goat's head. <laughs> I've never I've never actually pet one of these before. <laughs> Hi. Oh, goat you looks at you. Boy. I think you're so wonderful. The goat is going to, like, tuck its head in and kind of nudge you with its head. <laughs> Thank you. You're so nice. <laughs> All right, don't worry. That was good. All right, let's go. All right. So the group makes their way uh, out of Bacares and back into the Beckwood. Following the same path you did on the way last time you make your way into this place and you find yourselves back at the stone archway leading into the grove proper did the fetish we took get replaced no <laughs> plus one goat <laughs> I'm right. carrying said goat on my shoulders. You okay, Stavik, you are carrying the goat. Who's And a lot man? of you <laughs> return to this place. Again, you see this beautiful area where a stream comes in and makes its way around, forming this little island. And around this wetland are a number of these larger trees. A number of them are willows. Sweep, swept across the edge of the island and the edge of the river there in this sort of beautiful pristine area of wetlands within the forest as you approach again you see the druid is leaning up against the tree and sorting through some items in his hands as the other animals on the island are milling about doing their own thing the cow is looking at a tree the pig is flipping uh, an object over and the horse is at the edge of the water, staring at his own reflection. He likes the water. <laughs> Who nice. am I? What am I? Um, before we get into sight of it, I want to like nudge bro. All right, dude, bro nods. In position? Bro nods, and what he's going to do is make a stealth check. And bro heads off in a different direction. And leaves the party this will end well well so, Zan so go ahead go for it first Valentino you have the acorn so um are you okay with this sure of course okay Xander will be trying to detect magic as we kind of approach mm -hmm. okay as you approach, you detect a lot of ambient magic in the area. You believe that there is the presence of a... a connection and junction point of ley line in this area. So you sense a lot of positive energy flowing through the very ground and through the, the trees and the grass and the living things. All running toward this island ahead of you where this is sort of a nexus point of multiple lines of energy that connect the world together sure oh they're back bruno look the 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 cow will say looking down toward the, the rest of the group as they approach the archway illustrious king bruno monarch of the woods we return Bruno just scowls at you. We brought the goat. Why did you bring a goat? It's a good goat. It's a strong aura. Bring up the acorn. 
And we, we've got this. What's God's working on? Just... The druid looks at it and says, where did you find that? Where did we find it? <laughs> Louis is just going to shake you... his head at first. Can you let us help you if we tell you? Yes. Where did you find that? Because now you have gone from helping to interfering. I needed to find that to find the blessed being. Where was that found? And and Louis looks at Xander for a moment. Is it safe? Xander looks at Louis. Well, before we tell you that, I want to show you something else. Uh, Valentino's going to approach kind of like cautiously at first, try to mm -hmm. have my hands out to show that I'm being, and then pull out the amulet. Well, and this is well. The Temple of Eden. He's going to walk to the edge of the island. He says, That is familiar to me. I imagine he so. Reaches, he reaches into his cloak and he pulls out an amulet that could be its identical twin. It looks very old and looks like it's something that was obviously passed down to him. It was stowed away, but this is it's very important we found it there. This is tangible evidence that there is connection, that there is cooperation between your people and theirs. Are you willing to work with us? Please make a diplomacy check. I would love oh, to. God. Uh, do we make this blind? You do not have to make this blind. This can be okay. rolled openly. That will be a 17. Damn that, that modifier. I can work with you, but that doesn't mean that I trust you. All right? Well, that's fair. Probably even unreasonable. Trust is a hard thing to come by, given away too easily sometimes. Oh, where, where did they find? Where did you find the acorn? I found it in the farm that these friends of ours came from. Not the goat. The goat somewhere else. The, the goat somewhere else. Yes, but he—he's a friend too. He can vouch the, for us. The druid seems a little confused. So what's the reason you brought me a goat? It seemed spiritually significant at the time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to certain members of this group. Mm-hmm. All right. Just... You can come into the grove. Make yourselves comfortable. Thank you very much. And he turns and goes and sits on an ancient stone bench. You said there were willows on this island? Yeah, they sort of ring the island. The island is ringed in these willow trees, and they, they sort of have those long uh, vines that hang down and just brush the top of the water as it flows past. As soon as Louis is on this island, he's going to start uh, kind of taking the vines, the, the hanging branches down, and moving them with his hand as he walks past their line. Excuse me. Ander will go up to each of the animals and kneel down next to it and pass on the message. Your friend wanted to let you know that she loves you and she misses you and she asked for you to come home. Though I told her your feelings. Uh, oh, oh, you, you were able to talk with, with little Rebecca? Indeed. Oh, that's very nice. I miss her. She used to sing, and it was nice to listen to. She was also very kind. She also, she was good at brushing. I miss mm. it. 
say, you don't have any um, books on you, do you? I do. Oh, you do? Why? Cal turns and, and looks at you. Oh, I was just... <laughs> Gladys, like, <laughs> looks over her shoulder toward Bruno. Sort of, you get the sense to, to just see if he's within earshot. And then we'll look back to you. I suppose it's a little boring here. <laughs> and, oh. well, I was just wondering if there was, if you had any books or anything that I could read. Louis goes through his pack and finds a little book and holds it for a moment. What languages can you read? I'm not sure. I'm. I think I can read. I'm. I can read cow. I'm pretty sure I can. I can read. Well, the same thing I'm speaking. I. I think. Okay, not this one then. Mm. Do you have anything that has I romance have... in it? I do so love a love story. Louis kind of hunches his shoulders forward a little. He lowers his head. Yeah, I, I have some. Oh, could I... Could I just take a look? Do you want me to read it to you? Or... Oh, no. Okay. And he, he pulls... Small... Kind of rectangle-sized book. It's It's thick, but it's small. And mm -hmm. he opens the first page and holds it out for the cow. The cow will look at it and begin sort of reading it out loud, but quietly to herself. Mm -hmm. And then reach forward and with her mouth, grab the book uh, and take it from your hands wait. and just lay it on the ground. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, then, and then look at it and then just read it from there. You don't have to hold it, dear. I thought for sure this cow was going to eat the fucking book. Yes. <laughs> Thank I'm you, sorry, Miss. Dear, it was all Did rooms. I mean read? And then when when she needs to turn the page, she just flicks her tongue out and flips a page over um, and then reads the next page. I hope you enjoy that. Love and it. he pulls out his hand and just gently touches the top of her head and then her ears. <laughs> she she continues reading but leans her head into you. <laughs> he... He looks so happy that he might cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, while the two of you are having a moment, um, the pig is going to look over at Stavik and Valentino. Hey, so uh, hey, guess you two are welcome here on the island, huh? He hops up onto the stone bench. Well, it's about time. It's very pretty here. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's really great. There's lots of uh, trees to look at. So, uh, <laughs> I got a question for you. Of course. Sure. He, he looks one way or the other and he goes, Why was the pig invited to the farmer's party? Oh, no. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is a joke. Bye. Because he was a real ham. <laughs> I, got a, I got a million of these. Oh, I'm sure you oh, do. Please, another, sure another, you do. please, another. <laughs> well, why did the pig bury himself in a field? Why? Because he wanted to be a groundhog. I'm so glad I'm not a part of this. The extremely <laughs> genuine laughter from Scrooge is just uh -huh. too much. <laughs> well, he uh, did his best to force a laugh. <laughs> uh, Stavik is laughing heartily. Uh, he actually lets down the goat uh, towards the uh, druid to laugh. Bruno will will uh, pet the goat and walk it over to the, to him so he can converse with it. But I'll while he does that, while he does that, uh, Charles continues to to talk to you guys. All right, you know, you guys, 
you guys are great. And just so you know, you can you can tell me anything, because because pigs never tell secrets. <laughs> you know why? Why? I might. Because they're afraid of being a squealer. <laughs> <laughs> you get this guy a cigar. He just needs one. So badly. <laughs> yeah. And a little pork pie hat. <laughs> but hey, uh yeah, things things are great pretty much around here. Uh you know, uh I was I was feeling a little down. I th- I thought I was getting sick, but I was uh was thinking of maybe going to a to see a doctor. Oh no! What is it you have? Uh, I was feeling a little bored. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> <laughs> Valentino's uh, fake laugh is the best. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> oh, but hey, right, well. but yeah, you got you got Samuel over there. You see, uh, you see him. Oh, he indicates yeah. over to the horse that's just staring yeah. at his reflection in the water. Yeah. You know, he's always happy. You know why? Why? Because he lives in a stable environment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting pain. <laughs> I got a million of these. I got a million of these guys. I have angina. <laughs> I, I, you know, you should save the best ones for, for the next time we come see you. Hey, sure, sure. I, I got a bunch more. Are you sure? Let oh, me guess. You know, uh, Bru- does does Bruno not enjoy these? Not really. But, uh, you know, yeah. sometimes he's uh, he laughs at a few of them, but uh, these kind of just pop into my head. <sighs> you should go on tour. Guys, like, I'm really funny. I'm a funny guy. These things just pop in my head all the time. Who can't stop me? It's like, shh. Sh- Oh shit, that's good. <laughs> ah, Ben. Once he's done with our code, I guess I'll address Bruno. All right. Yeah. If, yep. you, if you cut him off and make him stop telling you these jokes, I won't make him. I'm gonna yeah. just kind of like be like, "Oh, you can talk. Talk to St- he's stop it. Like just kind of glide off while while Stavik mm-hmm. is taking the meat of the joke, taking the brunt. Oh of yeah, it. he's um mm-hmm. um eating him up. Phase in the background. All right. Well, Valentino, you can slide away. You see, Bruno is conversing, speaking to this goat in, well, what sounds like him making goat noises at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're basically just like, yeah, exactly. They're doing that with each other. <laughs> just like. Oh whoa! All right, maybe maybe I should come back. <laughs> Screaming at each other. <laughs> well, he turns and looks at you. What? What is it? Interrupting something? All right. Um, I was just learning about the truth behind this creature's ens- enslavement and imprisonment. Well, we brought them here, so this is over. Yes, but what about the rest of them? He had a family. We're working on it. All right. <laughs> God. It's not what this is. A, I mean, we're, we're trying to help you. All right. So I don't. I, I've gone around the town to try to find this aura of yours, which trust me, is one of my many skills. No one seems to fit to be. I can, we could take you with us. We are confident that between your power and ours, you will be unharmed. But I don't think you'll find who you're looking for in this town. Or it's quite right simple. Away. If the acorn was found at that farm, then it must be one of the... He kind of shudders when he says it. It must be one of the humans there. Really? What makes you so certain? You also brought me to the other talisman. It's surely a sign from Eden. See, we are on the same page about how this works. 
Well, my friend Bruno, if you are intending to take a person away from their life without their consent, you will have a problem again. I will tell you this straightforward. I'm telling you that there is no greater calling than to serve the mother of all life. And there are many ways to do so. She supports the farms, and they support her in return. If this person has been touched by the hand of Eden, they need to be educated in the ways of her power. They need to be taught. They need to let those gifts grow. If you were to waste that, that would be unconscionable. That person can make a true difference in the world. This community, I would not call a waste. If they are relying on someone truly connected with nature to keep them supported through many harsh winters. And they could do so much more if they understood the gifts that they were given. They need to be trained to use their powers properly. Perhaps Ethan does not ask more. The portents are clear. This person needs found. That's why the portents are there. Could you I not provide to... an education? That's what I'm saying, yes. Without I'm... taking them away, as a teacher would, going to the place where they live. They would do better here. Perhaps, but better is not what we can ask for in this situation. Pardon me. And Zoom's going to walk up. I mean, wouldn't it also be possible to just bring them here and they can return home when able? It's not that far of a walk. I am not sure living among humans would do well for them. As a human? Xander's going to say, walking up. A human contact is quite important for the upbringing of anyone. It can cause psychological damage to be away from your unkind for prolonged times. I would disagree with that. There are plenty of those to socialize with here in the forest. You don't seem psychologically damaged at all, either. <clears throat> well, in spite of that... <laughs> I think that these the uh, family is part of Eden's design. Going against the fundamentals of that is not abiding by her will at all. Well, it's not going to change anything talking about it here. Let's find this person and get on with it. He gets up from the bench, looks at the goat, makes some noises to the goat, and then the goat will hop up on the bench and sit down. Oh, this part's my favorite. She's my favorite main character out of the entire series. I think she's the oh. coolest. Oh, I do love the way they describe everyone's clothing so thoroughly. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it really lets you make a, a mental image of everything, doesn't it? Oh, and the way they describe her eyes, too. It's just mm. magical. Oh, I've never... Mm, I mean, I can see myself in the water, but... Would you say my eyes are pretty? Very much so, miss. Oh, thank you. I think they glow with a luster that you can only see when light hits it. People are fools to not be looking in them. Oh, it's very kind of you to say. Bruno just looks over at Gladys and Louie and then looks back at the rest of the party. Are we... Ready to go, then? Gladys. Indeed. You're welcome to keep the book. Uh, really? Mm-hmm. I bought that one, so we're all good. I don't have to return it anywhere. Gladys leans her head toward you and will lick your cheek. It's like sandpaper. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. Slimy sandpaper, yeah. I don't know if I'd describe a cow's tongue as sandpapery, but all right. I, okay. I, it's... I've grabbed a cow tongue before <laughs> with oh, my bad Slaps hands. in the face. Yeah. So the cow gives you a lick. 
and, and she goes back to reading. It's quite cow-like. Yeah, it is yes. a very cow-like tongue. <laughs> Louis cow -like, cow -like. looks so happy and then walks over to the others. Okay, uh, wh wh what happened? Sorry, I was really um, distracted. We're, We're going, going to, to go and find once and for all which being has been blessed by Eden and figure out what to do from there. Okay. Sounds good. Shall we? Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep the ley line safe for us, Charlie. Oh, you know it. I got Stay one more. Us, Charlie. I got one more before you go. Just speed up. Oh, just <laughs> one. What All did right. the horse say when it fell down? Nay. <laughs> Is that help? I've fallen. I can't giddy up. <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself. I'm gonna kill myself. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, uh, you've been great. You've been great. Thanks. Uh, have yourself you. a a fantastic evening. Oh. Uh. Uh, do you have do, do you have a very a favorite place for scritches before I go? What? <laughs> do you have a favorite like on do you, uh, right right on your ear? I, he I, takes I don't a step away from you. <laughs> oh shit. Thank you this for the no jokes, they were order. phenomenal. <laughs> All right, so Bruno heads across the, the river there, begins leaving, and as he does, uh, sneaking around from the other side of the arch, uh, Bastion mm -hmm. steps out with his weapons drawn. <laughs> He's... He stops and looks at Val, like, giving him the, the no, no. And he hops back behind the arch, puts his weapons away, and steps out. Oh, hey, everybody. Uh, well, I hey, got lost in the, the woods. woods. Whoa. I got lost on the way here, but I'm here now, everybody. Hi. Hey, try not to do that. That's weird. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> So God. the group heads out of the area and makes their way back to the Arroyo farm. <laughs> Everyone desperately scrambling yeah. against the border of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beating their heads against it. Um... You find yourselves back at the Arroyo farm. Bruno walks along a, a little bit distant from the rest of the party. Please try to be gentle with the people who live here. They were pretty freaked out with all their animals leaving. Uh, I'll be as gentle with them as they are with the beings they enslave. How about that? They love those animals. How about more than that? Like, <laughs> we, we're clearly on a different page on, on the relationship between people and the animals. That's uh, let them say their piece. So, your group arrives, and you find Rebecca and Ricardo uh, have finished their work, and they're sitting at the edge of the farm, and they're currently in the process of picking little flowers and tying them together and making a chain of flowers. I used oh, to do that. I love that. I also used to do that. Uh, that was Louie, but all right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you were. Just, I thought that was you. Sorry, sorry. Was not no, a Kenny. I was. I was agreeing with with Screwy. It's the thing. Mm. Thing I used to. I mean, I grew up in the country. There was not much else to do. Anyway, uh, uh, Valeria looks to the party as they return uh, with this druid in tow, and she immediately looks worried. Um, welcome back. Hi again. You don't need to be worried. We're here on your side. We brought the gentleman. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know if we, we explained this. Did you guys explain this when you were here? I mean, I kind of said that the druid had the, the animals. And there was okay, animal. so yeah, this is the druid. <laughs> this is Bruno. Hello. Bruno Valeria. Valeria Bruno. <laughs> you can call me Bruno. I'm. I'm from the Grove. And I'm talking to you don't much. know each other. You're getting great at it. 
Valeria looks at this man uh, worried and then glances over to her kids and looks even more worried and then glances back at Louis, hoping to figure out what's happening. Um, he's trying to find the person that is chosen by Eden because that silver acorn grew here. He believes that someone here is who Eden is asking for. And you... And we've assured her, him. Her, her mouth gets dry and she says, you think it's one of my kids. Or you... We, wish... we won't let anyone take you or your children. Not in these circumstances. You do not need to worry about that. We won't let that happen, okay? She nods. Although, we have talked with Bruno about this, and maybe we can organize a sort of education system. Have him come out and visit every so often. Teach the ways of Edo. Maybe when the time is right, they can even visit him, whoever it is. The second talisman seems to be a, a clear sign that it's time for me to take on an apprentice. So I need to it, check you and your kids to see if any of you are blessed. He's All really right? socially awkward. Just <laughs> <laughs> he's in, he looks incredibly uncomfortable. Just hold still. And he walks up and he like looks at Valeria and like leans in real close to her and sniffs and then leans back and turns his head to the side and sort of walks around her and looks back at her and says it's not you. The kids both step back. Um, Valeria, can you make sure they're okay? If it's one of them, what if he decides to, to take we them? We won't let him take them. Do you have my sword, this my lord? Kids. But I don't want your kids afraid. Can you can you come here? And she 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 kneels down and holds her arms out so the kids move up to her. Okay, kids. Um, this man is going to I guess smell you or something <laughs> and then <laughs> see what that means don't be too afraid our, our friends here remember the, the ones that bought you those nice whip cakes uh, they said that they'll make sure nothing bad happens so just please be brave okay they both nod and Ricardo steps forward. Bruno looks at him, leans in, sniffs the air around him, walks around him. What's the the group? What's it? Valentino's got, once he approaches either of the children, Valentino's got his hand on the sword. Just to be safe. He looks at this child, and then he looks back at the party and looks at Valeria. And says, No, it's not this one. Cardo like looks visibly relieved <laughs> and heads back over to be by his mom. Cloaked creepy man wants to come and sniff me. Yeah, I'd be relieved too. Rebecca looks at Valeria, looks at the druid, looks back at Valeria, and she does not move. Do you want me to hold your hand? She looks at Louis. Louis? Please make a diplomacy check. Okay. 16? <laughs> it was a three. I know I it's rolled terrible. a three. It's This is the worst. It's terrible. She is visibly shaking. She does not want to move. Louis is going to kneel down. And he's going to take out a piece of paper from his pack. And... 
he he puts it out in front of the two of them and he starts folding it in front of her. And quietly he starts saying what each fold does. Then you fold it like this. And slowly but surely there's a butterfly. And this friend's going to protect you, okay? How I made is a him... paper butterfly going to protect me? Do you believe in magic? She nods. He'll protect you. He's a hero. She reaches into her pocket and pulls out a frog. A real frog? Yeah, Lily. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Lily will protect you too. Mm-hmm. And Louis and she, will give... She takes the... the paper butterfly in one hand and has the frog in the other and then walks over and looks at the druid. Squeezing the life out of that frog. <laughs> <laughs> the druid looks at the little girl, leans down, sniffs the air, walks around, looking at her, kind of shakes his head for a second, looks at the rest of the group, looks at the little girl, and then he kneels down. And he looks at the frog, and he says something that really just sounds like someone going you just got indigestion <laughs> yeah he's kind of burbling at the frog the frog looks back at him and burbles back to which point the the little girl like her eyes go wide did you you can talk to lily and the, the druid bruno looks back at her and says of course that's one of the easiest things to learn. Would you like me to teach you? And she looks at this person and looks back at her mom and she has a, just her eyes are like saucers as she is realizing that such a thing can be done and looks back at this druid and says, I would like that, but does that mean I have to leave? And he looking looks at the group. Bruno. <laughs> What's up? Look, given him like fucking death glare, like, does it? <laughs> you would have to leave some of the time. You cannot learn everything from this farm. And he kind of like scrunches his, his lips up a little bit and says if that is what you would like to do and the little girl looks at her mother and her mother as if to get an answer from her mom and she walks over and kneels down and says this has to be your choice I can't make this for you okay she looks between these two people. Says, I'd like to be able to talk to Lily, too. Teach me. And Bruno will... Did you guys give him the talisman or just show it to him? I, I gave it. it. Okay. In that case, he takes out the talisman... Okay. And he hands it to her and says, you have a lot to learn. But you have the capacity to do so. And you will. So it's a long road and it's going to be difficult. think you'll be able to soon and he hands her the talisman and she she's out of hands she has a butterfly in one and a frog in the other so she thinks about it and she puts the butterfly in her mouth and then takes the talisman and holds that 
And then just surrounded by all this, she she looks around and she is going to lean into a hug to her mom. And the druid is going to stand up, take a few steps to the, uh, away from everybody else, and he's going to just kind of shiver. <laughs> <laughs> Xander's going to pipe up and he's just going to say, I believe that there are some things that you might be able to learn from Rebecca as well. He turns around and looks at Xander and looks at the kid and says, that may be true. There's lots about you people that I don't understand. We'll see. Perhaps you will. And he will turn and walk back into the forest. He he stops right at the edge of the... Uh, he, make, he makes his way right to the edge of the woods, and he turns around and says, Would you... Would you want your friends to come back? Rebecca looks over and calls, shouts back, Yes, please. I miss them. And at that, the druid turns and heads back into the woods. To which Rebecca goes back and will continue hugging her mom. Valeria looks a little worried toward the rest of the group, as if she's not sure what this new future is going to hold. I mean... Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Are you okay with this? Presta uh, Valeria. I it's well, it's Rebecca's choice, and if she can learn these kinds of things, then she can do more for this community than just being a farmer. It's possibly true. I think that we are very I don't think we have any reason not to trust him. I think he's just kind of weird. But if there's any other kind of assurances that you want, then I don't. We are a traveling band of heroes. Unfortunately, we cannot stay. But perhaps we can see if there's anyone that could be hired nearby. Oh, she thinks about it and says, "That sounds nice. If you'd like to do that." We'll see what we can do. I'm afraid yes. I have, I have no money to give you other than, and she'll she'll take out the money that has already been <laughs> given to her by you guys. I could give you this back if no, that would. Of course, would you're help. You, we help just to help. We need to make sure that <laughs> the balance is preserved, as heroes do. Don't worry, we will be in touch and. I'll keep an eye on her as much as possible. Valeria uh, nods and thanks and asks if if you all, being that you're traveling heroes, do you have to leave soon or are you staying for the night? We have to travel soon, but I think we can stay one more night. Then she will ask you to be guests in her home. It's not much, but it's at least cozy. No halfling worth his salt can turn down a home cooked meal. All right. Well, at that, she will invite you all into her house, and your group is given places to sleep for the night. They're not much more than your your own bed rolls on the floor in the place, but at least there's a roof over your head, so that's nice you're not being rained on and the fire is comfortable and the food is decent and the kids uh, are happy to sit around and and talk to you or listen to any stories you have to tell should we get um clara oh, i hate yeah. to be that guy you left her at the at the crusty churn yep of course. 
Do you want to get her, Valentino? She might get the wrong idea if I tell her to come with me to a, a mysterious place outside of town. But, uh, perhaps that will only make it more enticing. I shall go. Yeah, I think <laughs> you would probably be the most enticing person to talk to her. I'll go with you, Valentino. All right. Be safe, you too. Don't worry about it. Yeah. What were you doing by the archway, bro? I, I mean, Bastion. Oh, I mean, well, like, so, like, me and Valentino had this plan. Um, uh huh. To, like, kind of pincer, you know, if we needed to, to, like, get through it. Uh huh. And I thought that was still the plan, so I thought you were, like, luring him out into, like, an ambush. So I was like, I need to get him, you know? Yeah. So like, pa -pa, you know? This is going to be great. But then, but then Valentina was like, no, don't do it. And I was like, okay, fine. And then it was like, oh, okay. Guess we talked it out. Right. All right. Yeah. That's impressive. Well. Xander and Valentino? Yeah. I don't know so. if it needs a scene to talk to Kuga Clara or not. <laughs> Just tell her that we're going yeah. with the, what the situation is. Yeah, you guys can head back to the Krusty Churn and you end up finding... Probably a few more whip cakes. Nothing, yeah, of course. This shit. <laughs> the alcoholic whip cakes. You find... Xander... Go ahead. Xander would like to suggest to Valentino on the way there. Uh, he'll say... I think there is the possibility of asking that she stays here instead of coming with us, given that she's been to this place before. She presumably knows some people here, and the town that is currently being plagued by a serial killer may not actually be much safer than where she was coming from in the first place. Perhaps. But didn't she say she has someone she knew there? Perhaps. I guess we'll ask her. So yeah, do that. Xander has nothing else to add. Mm -hmm. He just nods and keeps walking. So yeah, we'll right. go get her. Um, to ask that if she wants to even come with us or if she safe, feels safer here. Okay, so you you both head to the crusty churn. You you find uh, Clara is very bored. <laughs> it's waiting there. She's been there all day, basically. And uh, yeah, she she sees you guys enter, and she's kind of sitting there watching to see if you guys are there to look at people or are there to actually talk to her because <laughs> she saw you earlier and didn't <laughs> say anything. So you enter the space, and as you walk up to her, she stands up. Oh, finally. I like this place and all, but I'm excited to get moving on to Luciana. Well, that answers that. Let's go, then. Oh, excellent. Are we um, just going to walk the rest of the way and camp on the road, or what's the plan? We do have a place we are staying here tonight. Uh, oh, okay. One of the farmers has invited oh. us for assistance. Okay. I've slept in a barn before. That shouldn't be so bad. Sleeping in a barn? What the fuck? I mean, he said it was a farm. I, I just figured it'd be in their barn or something. I, yeah, she didn't specify. It just, I, I assume that they would, you know, have a little more prestigious accommodations for someone. I mean, place, I most farmhouses are pretty tiny, so <laughs> I just figured yeah, the barn would have been just as fine. I mean, and like I said, as long as you put some hay down, it's not so bad. <laughs> I mean, might get some bug bites in the night, but I mean, come on. There's worse things in the world. No bug would dare bite, Valentino. <laughs> right you are. All right. Mm -hmm. And she'll follow behind. All right. Yeah, lead her back to the farmhouse. All right. So you guys make your way back, and you return with one Clara Valle. There she is. Oh. All right. Hi, Clara. Hello. So... You all make yourselves comfortable in the farmhouse. Things seem pretty decent. The kids, like I said, are telling you stories and listening to stories that you have to tell back to them. The mom seems 
a bit more relaxed about the situation. And the evening is going to continue to pass. Is there anything you guys would like to do specifically on the night of March 20th? Not if his kids are are excited to have stories regaled of them. Valentino is going to convince them that he is the fucking greatest person alive <laughs> before they're gone. Yeah, they're, they're down to listen. Louis will try to amp up Valentino's stories with some magical illusions, just to play along with it. But yeah, I mean, not, nothing yeah. in particular. No, Lou just wants. Uh, do, do we have to sleep in the barn? <laughs> yeah, do we end up sleeping in the barn? <laughs> no, no, you, you'll you'll have space in the in the house here. Fuck yeah, yeah beds. Uh, is there any <laughs> well, that Louis can have? Can Louis have a private area? That's a question you have to ask. Okay, He'll, the mom. All right, he's gonna ask her. Uh, excuse me. You you, know, so you go up to Valeria and ask her about everything. So let me go. And, place you guys into the actual space here so you find yourselves in this farmhouse everybody is kind of gathered around and enjoying the space valeria has cooked a decent meal for the group and uh, louis at one point in the evening you go over to valeria and the kids and you have a question for them. um Excuse me, miss. I don't know if you're able to, but is it possible if I could have a separate area just for me so that no one's around me when I'm sleeping? She looks over at you, a little puzzled. Um, I'm sorry, this isn't a, a, a high-class inn or anything. No, it's, it's okay. I just don't like sleeping in the same room as other people. Oh, uh, well, we only have the one bedroom, and normally that's where me and the children both sleep. No, no, no. All no. three of us. But don't, don't worry about that. I'll, um... We could... There was a shed I saw outside. I could... I could sleep in that. Are you sure? It, it's not very comfortable. Yeah. I'll be okay. Uh, all right. I, I could sleep in the barn, too. I, I don't think it would be right for you to sleep in the barn. I just don't want to inconvenience anyone. I'm I'm sorry I asked. Uh, please please ignore my request. I'm sorry. Oh no, it's fine. Truly, you don't you don't have to trouble yourself, it, kids. Mm -hmm. Do you want to sleep out here with everyone else tonight? No, no, instead don't of do in the that. bedroom. Don't do that. Okay, that sounds fun. Mm. That's fine. We'll we'll sleep out here. Here, and she'll walk over and open the door, uh, uh, showing you a quaint and comfortable, cozy little little place to to sleep. There's a single bed, and it has you know, three little indentations in the mattress, and it just it's a cozy little spot. And once she shows it to you, she says, if you'd like to sleep in here, that's fine. Um, Are you sure? Thank you. I don't want to take anything from you, please. Oh, Not even a good night's rest. It's okay. Um, it's only for one night, after all. And if it helps you sleep, then I would prefer you get a good night's sleep, because, well, you'll need it. It's a, a rough world out there, and your help is... It's appreciated. Thank you. Good night, miss. She'll turn from you and head back into the room. I think I will sleep outside, if that's all right. Is it still overcast? It is still overcast, yes. Uh, and time, time has rolled forward. It is, it is now... Uh, about nine o'clock, so it's it's well after sunset. And as the evening goes on, uh, around nine p.m. or so, you hear something 
at the door. You hear a knock. I I didn't expect any guests this time of night. Um, Were there anyone else in your group that would be arriving at around now? I just had to check for a second that Clara was with us. I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's at the end of the room. Yeah, she's sitting next she's to Bastion. And, and just Zulu. standing at the door like, you guys let me in. <laughs> it was not. I hope these lessons aren't starting this early. This is uh, perhaps a bit egregious. I have my hand on my sword just passively in case. Zulu's going to go up and open the door. Okay. You go up and open the door. As you do, you open the door, you see three <laughs> figures in the doorway. Uh, a pig, cow, and a horse. <laughs> the pig is looking at you, Zulin, and he says, I'm sorry, we don't, we don't ex- do not accept solicitation at this address, and I close the door. <laughs> so I I heard Gladys asking Bruno for some coins because I, I guess the farm life really had milked her dry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm free of this pain. No, no worry. <laughs> no worries. It's just the animals. <laughs> The, the Arroyos are excited and Rebecca rushes to the door to open it up. And as she does, uh, she steps out and all three of the the animals, uh, Charles, Gladys, and Samuel, are going to move forward and uh, hug her. And she seems incredibly happy to see them again. Okay, did they hug her with their legs or like just with their heads? Their heads. Okay. Yeah best they could do. <laughs> didn't know how intelligent these animals had gotten. Well, they're, they just... they're plenty intelligent. It's a matter of me- mechanical movements, you know? Yeah, that would be an unintelligent move. Yeah. It's a try for a horse. The, uh, imagining the, like, human animation put onto the s- skeleton. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, with everyone reunited and seemingly uh, a life of education in the powers of nature and perhaps exploring what the the blessing of Eden truly means for Rebecca, the Arroyos have an interesting life ahead of them, but one that the party is sadly not going to be a part of because you guys have places to go and things to do. So... Time passes that evening, and you all manage to get a night's sleep. Is there any anything else you guys need to do before the night is over? Uh, I think that I will try to craft up some alchemist fires. Okay. For myself. You yeah, need to get Rebecca it. to eat the amulet still. <laughs> yeah, I'll craft some <laughs> items too. Louis okay. sleeps like a bubba. <laughs> like a bubba. Like a bubba. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's 22. That's enough to make uh, Alchemist Fire. Do I have to do one for each one? Uh, no, you're fine. Okay. Yeah, as long as you have the supplies for them, you can craft them. Cool. All right, so yeah, you make a couple of Alchemist Fires, and the evening will go well. And as the night sets in, all get a good night's sleep and the next day gather your things and you begin to leave town of Bacares behind you is there anything else the group needs to do before departing this little town one last thing I think Valentino is starting to get sick of whipcakes but that's going to pass in a few days <laughs> get, get uh, those stored up we'll actually talk to the party in the morning and he'll say i believe i've discovered a means of preserving the freshness of these whip cakes for at least a week so if you would like to stock some of them i could theoretically keep them fresh indefinitely yes bro hugs you 
Hold on. Don't we have, like, <laughs> a special request batch that are being made? Yeah. We still gotta pick them up. Mm-hmm. We do. Yeah. Xander will hug that. Valentino wanted that 50 bad. or something like that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they were, uh... What were they? Well, they were rum. Like, they were the rum Oh, yeah, ones. no, it was that they were, like, um, half five, rum. Mm -hmm. Should we also check in with the mayor? Say we figured it out. Yeah, I guess so. Well, you could probably, probably do that. Good idea. Yeah. So, I guess we go and pick up our cakes painlessly and go talk to the mayor and let them know that everything's fine again. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. absolutely. All right, so you head to the mayor, well, elder, and as yeah. you explain to uh, Mayor Okanya, she is happy to hear that there was a uh, compromise, and she looks at the old Edenite temple there in the town and says that, well, maybe if things work out, maybe that uh, temple will be opened up one day again with proper repair work, mm -hmm. of course. You've all done an amazing job. I wasn't sure. People were talking about a beast, monsters attacking them and, and taking things. I assumed the worst. You all managed to do something that I, I well, no, I hoped against hope, but. Our entities were for our party. And I believe. Uh, the town owes you a bit of gratitude as well. You owe us nothing, but we'll take the gratitude. <laughs> now, what what was it that uh, we had posted again on this? Start, starts looking through some coffers. I'm going to say no to money. <laughs> Thank you very much, miss. Um, Mademoiselle. Oh, we appreciate it. <laughs> it's like your mom. <laughs> All right. And with that, <clears throat> uh, she will gather some things together and hand the group over uh, 100 gold coins. She says that Damn, Tom. the town doesn't have much, but they do appreciate when someone comes in here to do right by them and to help out when it's needed. Of so course. She'll turn over 100 gold coins out of the town's coffers and thank you all for the help that you've done. Sure you can afford this? You don't want to... Oh, we're not that, that small of a community. But all right. it was worth it to have a bit of new hope for cooperation in the future and Indeed. to reclaim part of our past, I suppose. And it seems like those things will happen. I suppose that's like 16-ish gold for each of us. And with that, she will bid you all a fine, tender farewell and see you off to the road. All right. You get your <clears throat> big old shipment of whip cakes and with that, mo half of them, I believe, being rum cakes, <laughs> uh, you load those on to your party loot and from there, you have nothing but the road ahead of you. So you Let's depart the town the of Bacares uh, unless there's any final last minute things. Nope. Cool. Can we role case. play on the road? <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. <clears throat> so your group makes your way out of Bicares and you continue to travel. <sighs> All right. You make your way out of the place. You get back on the road. It is March 21st, the year 808. It is early morning, and you have a whole day's travel ahead of you. 
The road is finally beginning to dry out as the very first actual bit of sunlight is going to start piercing through the now fracturing cloud cover. And you see the sun for the first time in about three days. It's uh, a beam of light, you know, comes on down and it warms your face and you feel a bit of fresh hope, a bit of, a bit of optimism in your situation. Well, thank you, my lady, and you're welcome for our efforts. We'll be sure to provide what assistance we can. Who are you talking to? Well, Eden, of course. Oh. A little bit of sunlight. Wouldn't that be... You know what? I don't, I don't actually care. Never mind. Eden's, Eden's not the sun. It's fine. No, um, the clouds. Congratulations to her. <laughs> so amazing. Do you think such a thing is congratulating? Should I congratulate you on for walking? Dear Valentino, it was sarcasm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Same here. <laughs> I just don't think a god who really does anything should be praised. Well, I'm appreciative of the clouds parting. It's a good sign. The road needs to be golden when it's paved ahead of me. Would expect nothing less from Valentino the Illustrious. Amazing, spectacular, fucking cool guy. Valentino the Unrivaled. You all catch on pretty quick. <laughs> I picked a good crew to hang with. Yeah, it's something like that. <laughs> And uh, as... Did you guys actually sleep well last night? It slept oh, well. Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> okay. A barn doesn't bother me. You slept in the barn. Well, a farmhouse doesn't bother me. Oh. You're referring to their farmhouse as a barn. Understood. Yeah, I've slept so in you... way worse places. Clara Have you grown up on a farm, Louis? This seems like a very important distinction for you. Uh, no, that was actually the first farm I've really been to. Oh. Really? City boy, huh? No, just traveled a lot. I mean, traveling a lot and never going to a farm seems kind of strange it to me. It just wasn't something that we needed to do. We? Travel with people? Yeah. Like who? She gets like right up next to you. <laughs> Louis leans back uncomfortably for a moment. My my sister. Oh, well, that's fun. Mm hmm. Are you just like merchants or are you just like those rich people who have enough money that they don't have to work? So they just travel around and see the world. No, no, we. We weren't either of those. My sister really... She likes singing. Oh, you were like traveling musicians? Wait, are you a musician? No. Oh, damn. Sorry. That's, I... It's fine. I like singing, but I'm not good at it. Hmm. I used to be, but not anymore. And that's okay. Hmm. I mean, I guess. So, like, you got worse at singing? Something like that. How do you get worse at singing? Things happen. Does that uh, have to do with the scars? He takes another step back. Clara, how far is this town? <clears throat> I thought What's we'd that? be there by now. How far away is this town? I thought we'd be there by now. We just left Picares. I mean, Luciana's like a bunch of days away, like two two or three days travel, probably. It, it's still early morning of the 21st. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're just walking and talking. 
Just walking yeah. and talking as you guys. I just figured this was some point in the day. Yeah. I figured this was almost not immediately after we left. Uh, almost immediately yeah. after we left because. No. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I, I thought I was a little bit in. Sorry. <laughs> All right. That's fine. We'll say it's the afternoon then of the twenty-first. So you guys have been walking for like. I mean, Valentine doesn't care if it's a dumb question anyway. Yeah. yeah. Not, he's not asking it to know the answer. Yeah. Just um, to, to get Clara off the scent. Yeah. <laughs> Louis will mm -hmm. kind of change his pace so that he's on the other side of Valentino at that point and has like a a bro barrier <laughs> between him and Clara. Yeah. And um, and the interruption worked. She seems to have forgotten her line of questions and we'll just talk to someone else then. Thank you. Oh, you got them. Um Louis's left hand, which is probably closest to you, is kind of ringing itself. He still keeps his right hand perched on his belt as he walks. Um, Valentino. Yeah. Uh, okay. This sounds really bad, but I just haven't actually spent time with a lot of people. Um, are you from the Mary Valley? Is that presumptuous? Is that rude? I don't no, actually no, know no. if that's rude. I'll tell you. As I've said before, mystery is one of my many talents. I must contain an air of mystery, but you've been a good ally. So I'll give you this. Yes. I was born in the Mary Valley. How long were you there? Well, we've gone back to the land of mystery. Sorry. And I tell you, I do miss it. So if we ever have the chance to pass through. Well... Louis looks confused when you say that. I don't know if that, that will actually realistically happen, but do you it's a nice place. Like what happened to it? It's a lot that happened in the Mary Valley in my lifetime. Yeah, I just I just read something about it. Um Yeah. A lot to do with Stars. That's all. Man. Is it getting cloudy again? Is that just me? Sorry. He steps a little bit farther away from Valentino. Perhaps that was me adding to the shade. No. I don't think anyone's going to cast shade on me. That's good. Sorry, I was just curious. Of course. I understand. I just... I want to know more about every place. I want to visit every place possible. Though I don't know if that place is specifically on my list because of... circumstances. Yeah, I, I spoke out of turn. It's not, not on my list either because of circumstances. I've already... Uh... You know, I, I know what I need to know about the Mary Valley, but I think we are on the same place. They're on the same page. I've been searching for someone, but I have no idea where to look, so I might as well look in as many places as possible. Huh. Um. If I can help within means, I will. We'll see when the time comes, but well, thank you. Yeah, I mean... As long as the person you're looking for isn't a psychopath serial killer, then we should be fine. I honestly have no idea. But I suppose if they are, you'll probably find them pretty quickly. Oh. <laughs> All right. That's great. That wouldn't match what I've been told, though. Okay. Okay. And he's quiet and he starts writing down in his notebook while you're talking or just walking silently next to you. Oh, so guys, these whip cakes are really great, but I gotta tell you, where we're going, where we're going, there is this place that puts this stuff to shame. 
uh, is this place called the Blessed Oven. I think I talked to you guys about this before, right? I don't it's think so. so. Oh what my gosh. There? Oh my gosh. So the guy that runs it, his name is uh, Vincenzo. It's a crazy name, right? I love but, that name. <laughs> <laughs> but he makes this food that I've never had anywhere else, and it is incredible. It is incredible. Uh, we, I got to take you guys there. First thing, get to Luciana. First thing, we got to go there. I'm not. I'm not joking. I don't like, know. That's... I heard there's a library there. Yeah, there's a library there. But yeah, you, that's no. the most interesting thing. We'll go to the library after you eat from the blessed oven. Okay. Come on, please let me have reading material when I'm eating. The only thing I really care about in this city is if they have expedited couriers. Oh, oh like what do you need? Because like they got like a lot of shops. Like Luciana is a big place. Um, I mean, I've been there a couple times. Most likely, no shop will have the materials that I require. I need a very specific make for my glassware. Oh. And Zulin will take out the uh, destroyed uh, little calcinate or whatever it is mm -hmm. that uh, has uh, one thing that still has the engraving of RD. On each and every one, there's like a little metal uh, piece at the top. That typical glassware has many imperfections, but this exact kind is custom made uh, to perfectly transfer the heat. Uh, huh. I mean, it seems pretty cool, but like, I mean, you can't just use like regular glass. The heat would disperse lightly and differently, which would mm -hmm. make the chemical reactions uh, harder to uh, recreate. That makes sense. Hmm. Okay. I mean, you I want guess. consistency right, yeah. when you're testing out something. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. I mean, look, I'm I'm not like a potiony guy, so I guess that makes sense. Uh, I just. If the gnomish glass is far more useful in this it's far more delicate gnomish but... oh it's like wait you send stuff away to like gnome stuff well not specifically uh, I, I have my own uh, supplier you can say there are still <laughs> gnomes around Oh, no, it's not from the Steam Isle or anything. Uh, steam Isle uh, material, uh, half the price. Huh. That sounds good, then. Mm. Yeah, I know some people nice. who sell that. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I mean, who is... do you by any chance know? There are people I haven't been in contact with for a long, long time. I'm not sure if I'd have to rebuild those connections, but... I know some people who are able to sell things from the Steam Isle for very cheap. This, I was able to contact a seller in uh, the province of Ville. That sounds about right. Well, let's see if I can get in touch with some old contacts if, if it's something you really need. As long as I can find expedited couriers it would be no problem at all this have to magically transfer the material to me in Luciana I see well you do you need the assistance just let me know just be aware hmm. I, my list of enemies is as long as my list of allies and uh, there might be some complications duly noted my friend Yeah, sounds good. I mean, Luciana's a big town. They might have all kinds of stuff there. But yeah, we'll definitely check into that. Yeah. I mean, how important is that piece anyway? Oh, I'll still be able to make some concoctions, but the entire set will allow me far greater uh, projects. Oh. All right. Cool. I mean... As long as we go there second, 
or maybe third after the library. I don't, I don't know. We're getting the order of operations here. Aren't we going to a place where we're supposed to stop first thing, though? I mean, there's that whole thing about, like, solving murders and, like, using that. Well, yeah, but they're going to give us free reign over the city. Like, they're going to give us some sort of mm, seal or something. Let us the places. Mr. Something Xander like over that. here is an official investigator, though. That's true. I suppose yeah. we've got all... And, I mean, I suppose people should be singing my praises by the time we walk through, so I suppose we don't need any more I mean, than that. You are a hero, right? Yeah, we've just proven that, haven't we? Not really. Once again. I would say what we have done was heroic. Pitiful. Really. You think so? It wasn't much. Of course all. not. It is the little acts of heroism that keep the world together. Louis looks like he's considering what Val is saying, but isn't a hundred percent convinced. If you say so, Valentino. I do. You will see in time. I think I will. Sebastian. Yo, what's up? You live here? In this what? country? You grew up here? Yeah, I mean, basically. Uh, I grew up in Kanya. Like, Kanya was born there, sort of. And then I spent some time in Lustiana. And I mean, I've, I've made the whole loop. Like, I've been to all the little places, like, at least once or twice. But, like, that's largely from, like, work and stuff. But most of it was, uh, you know, it was pretty cool. It's Why do you place. stay I mean, in Burgos? What? Why do you stay in Burgos? Because, like, home, I guess. I mean, I speak the language. You know, I, I know, know the good places to eat. Hmm. Um, you know, it's, sure it's not a bad spot. I mean, there's worse places to be. I mean... <laughs> could be like in the Sejun. free states or something <laughs> I mean I heard Sejun's kind of like pretty and stuff it was beautiful yeah I mean wouldn't mind seeing it someday I know someone who lives there well kind of lives there cool. uh, they'd probably help you out if you ever want to go out down there I can probably connect you two all right. Be nice to them, though. I mean, I'm nice to everybody, you know? But they're, like, really pretty. Like, so don't... Like really do pretty? An... Yeah. I mean... Like, is that I, wasn't pretty or, like, me? I mean, I'm, I'm going to, like, make sure that they're well-treated, uh, you know? Especially if they're really pretty. They were... Like nothing I've ever seen. I, I didn't even have a book on them when I first met them. They're so cool. You have books on people. What does Maybe. that mean? Maybe. You have a book on me. No, I have a book on races. Oh. Okay. So I, I, I might know how to interact with them when I happen to be in a situation. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, I've heard weirder things. Yep. <clears throat> Anyways. You're not as awkward as that druid was, so it's fine. That's a high compliment, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Speaking of awkwardness. Mm hmm The subject of religion, I feel, has gotten somewhat touchy. A number of times in the past couple days and i was just wondering if there are any other particular deities that you find abhorrent or if it's simply eden louis kind of posture changes a little bit as he looks xander in the eyes i feel as though louis tends to avoid eye contact in general mm-hmm I hate all of them. Every single one. Okay. So we have one member of the group who has been blessed uniquely by all of the gods. We have one who 
seems to hate all the gods. How they do the rest of you feel? Don't like cults either. See, Zulan gets it. I mean, like, I can take him or leave him. Like, the gods have never really done me any favors, but at the same time, like, exactly. maybe they've been. Maybe they've been keeping me alive this whole time, and I just don't realize it. So, like, I'm kind of neutral on the whole thing about gods. Like, okay, Zulin, it's you just know, you and me. <laughs> I'll maybe like give him a little bit of like, hey, good job, like, thanks, like maybe like a coin here or there, but like, I'm not really gonna like. That's all they ask. Oh, yeah, they ask too, too much. If they wanted more than I'm giving, then they would have made me give it more. Do not think that I harbor any hatred for the gods. It's just that they are not necessarily needed in my thoughts. Hmm. Stavik, how do you feel about the divine? I unfortunately feel significantly different than pretty much all of you um i believe like that there's that. they they have they have can you speak a little louder that, oh oh my my apologies i can't hear you Beyond over the cloth the mask on your face it's all uh, like my apologies you know we are we are a product of the divine grace we are and they deserve our reverence and each person has their place in the world and i do believe that we owe them a debt yeah they want you to think that i can understand your perspective and i can agree with it in part the part where you said that we are here because of the gods. I do agree with that, but in the same way that parents birth children, I don't necessarily think there needs to be a hierarchical relationship necessarily. Your parents aren't gods because they birthed you. They're just part of the same ecosystem that you are part of. So Eden is nature and I respect nature and I view Eden as a manifestation of that nature. So there isn't any particular reverence that I pay to her, but it's the same reverence that I pay to all things. Exactly. I go when she's got my back and she's thanking me when I've helped the world. Mm. I disagree, but to each their own. Never really comes up for me that much. I mean, I've never really like, you know, had to talk with the gods, and it's not like they gave me any kind of like magic and blessings and shit. So like, whatever. Oh, well, you they seem pretty their... blessed to me, bro. <laughs> Thanks, but yeah, no, they do their thing, I do my thing. It, it works out, you know. But I'm not like slinging spells around and crap. Mm. So, whatever. Yeah, I don't like their magic, so. I'm glad to not be in contact with it normally. Yeah, you're like, you're just a wizard. So like you learned that shit yourself, which is pretty cool. I mean, I feel like if, if my life was different and like I was born in like a rich family or something, I might've been a wizard. Maybe. Oh, you want to grow up to be a noble one day? No, I'm just saying like if I had like money to go to an academy and shit. Do I mean, you eventually you could. Your magic? I don't think they enroll people that are over like age ten. I'm self taught. Like, you're self taught? Like yeah. you just like picked up scrolls and shit and just like learned it. Yeah. Crazy. I thought it takes people like a decade of like studying to like cast just This is why I'm not shit. a very good wizard. <laughs> well you're not a bad wizard. You're plenty good. You cast spells. Thanks. To be clear, Lily, I do not think that my own power is owed to the gods, nor is yours. I think that your dedication to self-reliance is extremely admirable. Oh, this is the right path. that's not why I True. dislike them. Perhaps, but just be clear. So, um, question. Yeah. Does, so you learn 
the scrolls, you learn the words, you learn the, the incantations required to conduct the spell. Not just incantations, the... items too. Sometimes I have to use rocks or ash or incense in a spell. Some spells use poop. So, I try not to talk about that those. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> shh, shh, shh. So <laughs> where does the power come from then? Me. Pretty sweet. Then, well, but then, but how did you get the power? I worked hard. Okay, but my point is, where does it, where does the power come from? He he blinks. <laughs> I feel like where we're talking it, in you've, circles. You've built the power. Yes, you've built the power, but my does, soul does, is that good enough? My, my point is, in my in my belief, don't while you are you Sad. learned it. Don't you draw from the divine powers. So, I... so let me get this straight. So you're saying that because a wizard casts magic and they have a soul, that makes the magic divine? I don't think that tracks, man. No, I, I can show you how divine of... it is. Okay. Uh, we've... You uh, you feeling okay? There's some like icicles. Like you all right? No, he's suggesting that I would dare touch anything a god would. I mean, I I guess, but like technically, didn't like gods like you know crafted the world and shit? So like just like shut the fuck up. All right, I'm sorry. I'm splitting hairs. Quiet. No, that's exactly what I'm saying. The power originated no, from somewhere. Just to, to so make the record clear. From... I disagree with everything that Stavik is saying. I don't I don't I don't think that a wizard is divine just by virtue of existing. So that's my thing. No, I my argument is that the power comes from somewhere event originally. What you're doing with it is your own. Can you free from any connection of them drop but it the power does please of course if that is your wish yeah I'm not, I'm not here to I'm not here to offend you have multiple times hmm. Stavik I may ask a question of you hmm. if you feel that you owe a debt to the gods mm-hmm how would you know if that is paid? Says it's the... <laughs> oh, God, he's crazy. <laughs> right. Um, there's a... The, the, um, the, the, uh, the de <laughs> I will definitely know when the debt is paid. And that is because? Um, it will, it is, it is personal. Do you see. owe your debt to all the gods or a particular one? Um, well, it's, um, mostly to the one on but there are some others I think my might, but I definitely want to Which one ones? <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but I know that there's one that I'm, I, I keep close to my heart. And when that debt is paid and when that is- Yeah, that's when, not answering the I question. If you don't want to answer it, it's it. fine. I, I, I'd rather not, if that is okay. Y'all got a lot of secrets. You know that? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he I've says, been pretty open, to be honest. Just looking around the entire party. Like, I'm an open book. Like, Y'all can ask me yeah. anything. I you was actually you, worked, or you came around here from work. Where did you work? 
What? Oh, like work? Oh, you know, like who you work with? Uh, other people in the guild. What uh, kind of guild? Oh, you, the thief kind. You know, stealing stuff, robbing people. I mean, robbing people is probably not the right word for it. Finding things is how I like to phrase it. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, you know, you find things, especially when it's rich people that don't need that much. Um, hmm. Good to know. But yeah, you know, um, you go from place to place, you do your thing. I did not know there was a thieves guild in Burgos. Oh, I mean, there's a there's a couple. Uh, there's actually quite a few. But they they uh, they fight each other a lot. There's a lot of territory struggles and things. It's one of the reasons I kind of got out of the game. Um, so there's went, no one in control solo. right now. What's that? There's no one guild that's in control. Oh no, there's like seven, something like that, maybe more. And they fracture all the time too. Like it's like think of it like holding onto a bunch of sand. You know, like it just, it just, you can't, you, you, the harder you squeeze, the more of it falls out. So like, it doesn't work. And but, like every time one of these guilds like decides to like, oh, I'm going to take over Burgos. It's it never, never works. It just ends up fracturing the guild into like four or five smaller ones as like each individual mm -hmm. lieutenant thinks that they can split off and take over. It's like the whole thing is just a mess. So. And it is quite profitable, though, for the alchemical industry. Uh, many different potions and concoctions made for each subsection. Oh, for sure. Like, everybody's got their own little signature, and, like, some folks really like to use, like, specially tailor-made, like, poisons and stuff. So, like, oh, yeah. it's The alchemy business is booming, I'll tell you. A lot of the shipments that we'd, we'd nick would be, like, certain kinds of, uh, well... One big one was uh, sedatives. That was one that people really... Is, I mean, let me tell you. That sounds like revenge. Come a long way. Like, uh, be, folks, now you could just, like, coat a dagger in something, stick a guy with it, and it passes right out. It's crazy as shit. That's kind of how daggers work. That happen often? <laughs> yeah, but they don't die. See, that's the trick, right? I see. You just cut them a little bit, and they just fall over asleep. And, and that stuff's used in a lot of guilds, because a lot of people... They make their money now through, like, you know, buying and selling people, do, do which is pretty fucked up. Do we need to so, be worried about that? No, 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 we're fine. No. Like, maybe once we get to Luciana, maybe. Probably. Probably, people yeah. People don't have to worry about it. But we're not in the, we're in the, we're in the middle of nowhere right now. He just gestures broadly no, to I, the I, plains. I meant when we get to the town. Yeah, and Luciana, yeah, probably, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. We won't have to worry about it, though. I mean, you like definitely like watch your back and like maybe take your coin purse and like hide it inside something else because like if that's like just out <laughs> it's pretty much gonna be I, gone. I know better than that. Okay. Yeah. See, you, you've traveled. You know what you're doing. Yeah. Sleeping shifts, all that kind of thing. I'm tangled with bigger fish yeah, and I mean, that. It's fine. I'm pretty good at spotting stuff, so it'll be okay. Just stick with me. Okay. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fine. Yeah, so this is a pretty crazy place. There's all sorts of weird shit. Yeah, so I don't tell me that the... I mean, it's not Canyas. I'll say that. Canyas? That place? There's nothing quite like the smell of the docks in the morning. When the sun first hits the fisheries. Oh, man. The smell of that place? It's it's That's home, man. There's nothing quite like it. You'll have to show mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Now Luciana's like way cleaner. It's just a river town. <laughs> Water is a life source, though. That's yeah, true. So were the thieves' guilds your family? Uh, not really. I mean, family is a super strong word. I mean. With the guilds, like, when you're rolling with people and you're on a job, like, you have to be able to trust each other with your lives because, like, shit can go wrong any time. So, like, those folks at those times, like, I trusted them. But, you know, once that's done, you get your money paid out. You know, as soon as you're paid out, you may as no well be strangers, run with. you know? Huh? Oh. What? No long-term crew to run with. I mean, you can, but, like, usually the guilds, like, are just there to, like, act as a way for people to get in touch with each other, you know, to yeah, network. This is why they're falling where they're constantly fighting each other. I mean, probably, but like, I don't care about like 
stability with that stuff. Like, I feel like that would just make it worse in the long run. Could you imagine if one syndicate, like, ran the whole country? That would be terrible. Like, the amount of, like, overhead and the amount of, like, <laughs> they could just set the, they could set the crime rate everywhere. Like, it would just be crazy. Like, at least with, like, multiple smaller crazy. guilds, there's, like, at least some sport to it, you know? Yeah, it's really good that no one like that has moved in here, for real. Well, that or anybody who's tried just kind of failed anyway, so whatever. <laughs> well, then they're lucky I have not tried my hand at it. <laughs> Val, I don't think you'd like it. It's I imagine it'd be boring. It's, the crime it's... life? No, running the crime life. Mm, the yes. crime life's fun, right? But like the the management side of it, forget it. <laughs> There's no that amount is of what money. delegation is for, correct? Yeah, but what do you so so you what you sit on a pile of money all day like i'm not a dragon i don't give a shit i don't want to do that like i want if i'm gonna do something to go out there and experience it i agree i want to see everything yeah i bet you do what does that mean i'm just saying you probably have some cool stories about places not enough hmm. well we'll do it we'll see everything Sounds good. We got to solve some murders in Luciana first, but yeah. I mean, I was heading to Parthenay after this country. If we decide that we're all okay together. It's as good as place as any. My mystery person. Could I haven't heard a well. lot of great things about it, but I am curious about the food. Yeah, I heard the food is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's half been good, but it's probably pretty good. I mean, I, I speak the language, so why not, you know? Same. Yeah. Oh, Valentino, you were speaking the same language as the Kadali, right? Yes, I seem to, they, they seem to be speaking an interesting dialect. Could you help me learn how to do that? Can you teach, I, I guess, is the question. If that's too much, that's, 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 that's okay. I, I don't, I don't want to, um, be I annoying. Do for you. The dialect that I know is perhaps a bit different from what they were speaking. Okay. But in time, I can teach you. Not just yet. <laughs> okay. You have to prove yourself first. Yeah. I have to. <laughs> I have to ensure that uh, this is this new family is going to stick around as long as I feel well. Maybe we shouldn't label that yet. That's why. Once we get there, yeah, I will I mean... teach you. Right. Of course. Yeah, I it's mean... something I can only teach the family. Mm -hmm. It's a rule. Did just meet you guys three days ago, so you know. Y'all are cool and all, but we'll get there. Probably. Well, I mean, my first family was the family the first day I knew them. Time doesn't need to be a factor. You know what? That makes sense. Well put. Me as well. Hmm. And with that, your group continues traveling down the road as Heim does its thing and marches along. So, as we push time forward to the evening of March 21st, your group has made it across the lower bridge across the Riviera Cabra, which, to your great relief, is still intact and standing. And you make your way across over onto the eastern side of the river, following the road which will eventually lead you to the town of Luciana. As your group makes camp that night, something is going to happen. As your group camps down for the night and you hear nothing but the crackle and pop of your own campfire and can look up and see the stars finally in the sky as the cloud cover has fully broken. You can hear in the distance the wa the wheels of a wagon uh, as it is approaching along toward your roadside camp. 
First thing you note is that it's a bit odd for someone to be traveling via wagon at night. Most folks stop at sundown and pitch a camp and go to sleep and continue their journey the next day. But this wagon is swiftly approaching along the road. So my question is, at about nine o'clock, I assume the party is probably still all awake, right? You wouldn't have mm-hmm. yeah. broken for sleep yet? Okay. I mean, mm-hmm. Louis definitely getting the sleepies in his eyes and getting ready to mm-hmm. sleep forever kind of situation. All right. Well, in that case, you're all awake and you hear this wagon approaching. Uh, though it is dark out, the, the sun has set, there is enough starlight that you can see this wagon coming in, uh, actually heading in your direction from the southeast. So it must have left Luciana and is moving its way up toward Kanyas. And this is a, not the most busy road in the world. So a lot of the traffic that moves between these towns actually does through, through the rivers. Um, so there's very few, there has been very few travelers. And it's fairly, particularly odd that this one is traveling via wagon uh, at night. And as it approaches, it slows down and eventually comes to a stop at the road right beside your camp. Mm-hmm. Um, guys. Hello there. Hello! Can we help you? You seem, you seem to take an interest in our camp. Indeed. Hopping down from this wagon, that as it stopped in front of your camp, you realize the wagon itself is strangely small. It, it appears to be uh, sized for someone smaller than a human. And in fact, the horse pulling it is actually a pony instead of a horse. Hopping down from the wagon and walking towards your group, appears to be a gnome uh, a male gnome they do exist (laughs) (laughs) he appears to be somewhat I guess the way I would put it is he looks tired his eyes are kind of sunken in he has grease on his hands and under his fingernails and he looks at you with a practiced smile of a salesman. Mm. Ha. Oh, a fine and good evening like to you all. Uh, I, he, he'll reach up and take a small hat that he's wearing, take it off, hold it over his chest, give a small bow. I'm Oswald O'Connor, a traveling merchant and peddler of the interesting and bizarre. Might I perhaps interest you in some odds and ends fresh from the steam aisles you find yourself <laughs> in the company of the illustrious Valentino and bizarre does happen to be my cup of tea as it were. Oh, excellent well puts his hat back on then I welcome you to uh, peruse my wares and he will Sweet walk over to his wagon and kind of bangs on the side of it and one of the side walls of the wagon will drop down and you see uh, arrayed before you is an eclectic array of garbage I think is how I would put it <laughs> um, Great. Good. most of it appears to be in various states of brokenness most of it is caked in oil and you're not really sure the intended purpose or value of basically anything on this wagon. It, it seems like it's a piece here and there of other machines and none of it makes a lot of sense to you, at least right off the bat. So what are we looking at? Yeah. Um, it's a part of my orbs. inability, my, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not very well versed in the mechanicals. Um, oh, 
that's quite all right. These are uh, various bits and bobs, and he'll go on to explain the extreme value and importance of many of these pieces of, of kit that he has, though they all appear to be critical components of other machines. And unless you have a, a steam wheel that you're running a mill from, there's not much reason to have the particular sized gears and sprockets that he has that fits one of those devices. So as odd and interesting as these items are, they don't really have much of a use for any of you. Do any of these look familiar at all to uh, anything I've seen from my supplier? Uh, kind of. At least the, the similar style of production is there, but these particular items would not be of any use to you for your kit or your crossbow. Mm -hmm. Unless you were to like completely redesign your, your stuff to, to incorporate one of these parts, but that would require more parts that this guy doesn't have, so... Could I try to appraise this and see how Absolutely. it compares? And yeah. Compares it to like the pricing that I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you can you can try to appraise these items and see. It's gonna be a twenty-two. All right. So Zulin, you appraise these items and you get the sense that these are antique. These are well made, but mm -hmm. from they're from an age past, basically. These are from a bygone era. You get the sense that these were constructed before the collapse. So this is likely either handed down treasure or scrap that has been salvaged from gnomish cities or gnomish wrecks. But there's not much in this that really even functions anymore or has much use at this point. God, and Graham has so many questions that Valentino does not. <laughs> See, you get this whose logo. Whose logo is on them? <laughs> uh, go ahead, Jane. None of it detects is magical, correct? No, none of it's magical. Do the, any of these things have a maker's mark? And would I, would be a check for me to know that or identify them? Um. Yeah, some of them have maker's marks. Any chance I could identify them? Probably not. Uh, for Valentino, it would be very difficult. I, I don't think there'd be anything in that that would make a lot of sense. Okay. Like, Valentino just doesn't have a whole lot of... No. The only thing I can think of that he would know that's similar would be... This sounds like it's preceding. Mm -hmm. So... Well, um... I know for myself, there's not... While this is all very interesting, I unfortunately do not have any use for um, this. Any wing dangler? Picks up... Who doesn't need a wing dangler? It's a wing... That's what this is called. Oh, um, no, I, I don't think I have any need for it. But you are you traveling on this road all by yourself? Oh, uh, I mean, yes, it's normally quite safe around here. Uh, why? Is there trouble, or has there been? Well, um, further up the across the bridge, further up the road, there was a um incident at the Traveler's Rest. Oh no, I've I like that inn. I've been there many times. I don't uh, think you're happened? gonna be Most going to there very down, much. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> oh dear. I've been. I would it's recommend. Clarence, you're shot on. <laughs> I was gonna yeah. say. <laughs> yeah, she's by the campfire watching this all. Um. I don't know if you are intending on continuing driving on, but um, well, did I, you? I, if, well, I was actually going to ask if uh, I could perhaps exchange a stay by your fire uh, for perhaps a tail or two from the road. Are we sure oh, that's safe? I just think they, they seem safe enough. Bro leans in and says, "You can probably take it." We'll do shifts. I'm very interested in stories. I, I, I like, I like hearing stories. I like oh. hearing people's stories. All right. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear it. I will happily tell you some stories in exchange for a night by your warm-looking campfire. Of course. He will grab a, a sack of goods from the wagon, uh, sit down, and begin munching into some cheese. 
and we'll start talking about various topics. Everyone knows gnomes like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so a little while later, uh, as the conversation continues to twist and turn through the night, he will eventually speak up and say, uh, would anyone here like to hear the tale of the Lonely Lord? Yes. Sounds oh, good. Interesting a, one. Oh, wonderful. That sounds interesting. I'm glad to tell it. <clears throat> Let's see. How does it start? He takes a nibble of cheese and thinks, how does it start? Right. <clears throat> this starts, there once was a lonely lord. I'm going to say immediately. <laughs> there once was long a hungry ago, caterpillar. <laughs> long ago, there lived a young lord by the name of Hybert Goss. His family was old and respected, but often struck by tragedy. His parents had both died in accidents that most called impossible twists of fate from the gods. Being a lord at such a young age made the lad feel a terrible weight of responsibility, and yet he was so unprepared for his duties that he often couldn't decide what to do when presented with a problem. Uh, the weight of his indecision grew, and his people would complain that any problem brought to the young lord would never be resolved. Goss continued to wallow in his problem, growing more and more depressed as time went on, and he begged and pleaded to the gods for an answer, until one day he got it. A traveler arrived at his doorstep and asked to play a game with the lord. Uh, the lord, having much work to do, uh, wanted to continue working, but the game sounded fun, so as usual, he was trapped in indecision as to what to do. The traveler laughed at him and explained that he had heard tales of Goss the Indecisive, uh, but wasn't sure just how accurate they were until that very moment. Uh, he pushed his way into the Lord's home and led him to his own supper table, where he laid out a game board and carefully placed down a set of carved bone dice. He said, See here, O Lord of this land, dice these be, but no numbers do they roll but fates and outcomes themselves. Take them as you take up your own life and roll. The traveler stepped back from the table and uh, allowed the Lord uh, a look at the dice in the board and upon its wooden surface, seeing his own town's layout carved upon, uh, he examined the die and each face shimmered, uh, its rune carved sides shifting and changing constantly. The Lord looked quizzically at the traveler, picking up the dice, turning them over in his hands, and then rolled them across the board, each bone clattering before coming to a stop. The rune facing up on each stopped its shifting, and its faces could at last be read. Some said wealth, others said luck, some said love, and others happiness. The traveler turned to the young lord and said, no fates today you have twisted, controlled, and changed. Keep you these dice, roll them when must needs, but be ever wary, as luck is a fickle thing. And with that, the traveler departed, a grin on their face, never to be seen again. The young lord was puzzled, but upon leaving his home, his people came to him, speaking of great fortunes, newfound love, and immeasurable happiness. He decided that day to keep these dice close and to use them when he needed fate to intervene in matters that he could not decide upon. And for years, things continued this way. Those who came to him for problems would be heard out. The Lord would make a board and roll upon it, sealing the fate of the problem and sparing him the effort of having to choose. <laughs> now, he became a bit obsessed over the power of those dice and that he made fewer and fewer choices of his own, relying on them to make his every choice. His people became worried at how withdrawn he had become and how the village was beginning to fall to ruin around them. Uh, the Lord lived on like this, his lands becoming more and more deserted as his people randomly died, bled, or moved away with their newfound wealth and fortune. And eventually, 
the years passed him by. He was now an old man, alone, rolling his dice in his castle, unable to decide his own fate, completely in the thrall of his gift. When a traveler arrived at his door, the same smiling travel from decades before unchanged a day. Lived you a life worth living, O Lord? asked he. Learned the extent of your weakness, the cruelty of your indecision, and the fickleness of the dice? The Lord was enraged at the impertinence of this guest in his own home and wanted to punish him uh, or to lash out at him and strike him or to tell him to be gone and exile him and uh, also to have him hung by the neck from a tree. But he wasn't sure what to do, so he pulled his dice out, mumbled to himself, and rolled the bones as he had done a million times before. The dice clattered across the table and came to rest upon a most alarming word. Death. 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 Each rune read the same, unchanging, sealed, and done. The traveler smiled, looking at him and simply said, O oh Lord, think you to use mine own gift against me? How folly your life has been, made no choices of your own and lived a slave to yourself. I take these back along with your life. May others make a better choice. With a shocked expression, the old lord fell dead on the spot. The traveler plucked his dice from the table and departed the lonely lord's domain. It is said that those who visit Belmez to this day can still hear the sound of bones rolling across the tables and floors of that castle. Though few dare to venture to that old place, fates and curses are usually enough to keep the common folk at bay. But perhaps in that old castle there still lies the treasures the dice gave that old lord. Or perhaps it's just an old story. He takes a drink of his, his liqueur. Perhaps it's just an old story. <clears throat> perhaps we could find out it is on the way after all. I mean, yes, don't we have a job to do? Yes, but such funds could be quite beneficial. What do you see, bro? You want to find some things? Bro looks strangely quiet after hearing that story. He doesn't seem to hear you. No? Louis will gently touch his shoulder. Hey. Huh? Hey, what? what's up? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm great. Just so um, doing some classic finding. I mean, maybe. Do you think there's um, stuff to be worth taking? Perhaps. I think some lord or the ghost of one who can't decide anything for himself doesn't so scare me too much. Doesn't sound like most lords I've known either. They tend to be almost too rigid on their decisions. Nice. Well, then, um, yeah, it's on the way. If you guys want to go. Yeah. Do I know anything about Belmez? I will take a knowledge history or knowledge local for Belmez. I would like to make that as well. Please do. I would like to make that as well. It is free. It is free for anyone with those knowledges to make that roll. I have neither. That is a nat 20 for me. Wonderful. 17 for a knowledge history. Okay. Do you want both or just uh, one? If you want to roll, uh, if I'd say just one would be fine. Okay. Yeah. I rolled that. Um, okay. Yeah, you were blind. Moved. It's fine. You, you got a 10. Oh. Oh. It's all good. Oh, okay. So no. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, Stavik, you are unfamiliar with the story. You're unfamiliar with the mm. town, I should say. It's a wonderful story. The town from the story. Uh, Louis, you have heard of the town before, but you don't know much about it. It's just kind of sits in your mind as a place you've heard of once, but you don't really understand any significance about it. Xander, you know a bit more than, than that. You're familiar with Belmez enough to know that it was a prosperous small town that was struck with very sudden tragedy and the town was abandoned for reasons that are not completely understood. But it is very clear today, at least, that the town is treated with a fairly significant taboo on going there. Most folks 
avoid it, and the roads no longer even go to the town. There's there's nothing there for anyone anymore. Xander will say to the group, I think that there is a very good chance that any possessions or items of import are likely still there, considering the town is a little bit of a taboo subject in this country. Sounds like a long deal to me, then. We're not going to get hurt in a place like that, are we? We may find trouble there, but we I already bring trouble with me. Cool. There's no escaping it. Uh, I think it's completely legitimate to try to escape trouble. You will fail eventually. I don't think so. I suppose it depends on whether you roll those dice. Mm -hmm. I choose my own He will say as he pulls out gold for the traveler. Oh, I thank you kindly. I do appreciate this. I give him five. What the fuck? Thank you. You, Sander, stop giving out money everywhere. I give him a (laughs) hundred. Yes, he he graciously takes your money. (laughs) <laughs> I drowned apologies. him in gold. <laughs> he he graciously takes your five gold pieces, and uh, will will nod in appreciation, and uh, will offer some of his cheese. Change. Nice. Uh, Xander will take some and offer it to everybody else. I'll happily take some cheese. Isn't the adventure the cheese we ate along mm-hmm. the way? True. <laughs> so as your group, it's a wonderful story. As your group. Uh, spends time around the campfire there discussing things and thinking about the possibilities of what may lay in that taboo town of Belmez and whether the magical dice that brought fortune and calamity to that place could possibly still be there or perhaps the fortunes that it brought could still be there. And as you go to sleep that night thinking about the possibilities of the future, that is where we're going to call the session. All right. Good Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for listening. As always, special thanks to William Succi and Andreas Pitchler for the intro and outro themes, and Emily Roll for Fantasy for this episode's soundtrack. Interested in following us on social media? Follow us on Twitter at CheckPleaseDD. Or want to support the podcast and be part of the Czech Republic? Go to our Patreon under the Czech Republic. Until next time!